Hi. Hi, Armin. How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah, uh, well, I'm, I'm really pleased to have you uh, here again as a guest. It's always very, um, I, you know, every time we talk, I, I get very excited because we I watch your content. So you, you're one of my heroes. Um, and it just feels really great to be able to just talk to you. I, I don't know. I, I watch all of your videos. I love all of your videos. I mentioned last time we, we tried this, uh, that every time I want to get like the resources or a quick summary of something that I need to check, I just search on your channel for it uh, to see if you made a video about it. And usually you have made a video about it. So it's really, it's a really good resource. Um, I was like, how is he going to like, he seems to have covered so many things. What is, what is he going to talk about next? But you always come up with more ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever worry about running out of content? No, right? Because there's so much there, right? Like, well, thank you so much. First of all, I'm, it's, it's really, I'm really honored by your, I don't know, by, by your words, by your feelings about, about, about that. Very, very honored. Thank you. But yeah, I, I do have, um, I do have moments occasionally, uh, to be very, very honest, to be very frank, I have moments where I'm like, okay, uh, what am I going to do now? <laughs> and I sit down and I, I plan on the next topic. And I look at, uh, I have, I have usually a list of all the topics that I have planned that I also want to uh, make a video about. But then I sit down and I just can't find myself motivated enough to work on a specific thing. And I, th and I feel like I've talked about this before. I, I kind of talked about this uh, in another video. And uh, I have difficulties with it. But usually I just uh, come up with something. Sometimes something completely unplanned, something that wasn't even on my list, some quick idea that I had, and then I make a video about it. It's yeah. there, there. There's there is a there is an endless pool of topics when it comes to Islam that we can talk about. You know, right, right. But today we're gonna. I think we're gonna talk mostly about Christianity. It's very interesting. Two ex-Muslims talking about Christianity. But the reason <laughs> why we're gonna talk about that because. We might have some, uh, as we mentioned last time, we might have some disagreements on this, but that's why we want to talk about it. Because yeah. me and you probably agree on, you know, 95% of, of our views are the same, right? So, but it's just, it's, but people already get that from your channel and people get that you know, from other places that the stuff that we agree on, we already know what those are, right? Yeah. So it's just more interesting just to talk about the things that might we might have slight disagreements are on, right? And so the reason, the, the source of this, the, by the way, people always think that disagreements, when we have disagreements, people think we're against each other. But no, it's the most fun disagreements are disagreements with your friends, right? Absolutely. And for, Right, because you know that you could have a conversation with them and debate them, and it's it's a lot less hostile, a lot more in, enjoyable to have these disagreements and see. Uh, and it's the point of these discussing these disagreements is not necessarily to change each other's opinions, but also it's mostly for the audience, but all, and also to you know have an understanding of where, where the other side is coming from. Um, so just to put just to give people some understanding, I uh, mostly focus on. Not mostly. I focus on attacking all religions and mm -hmm. all dogma and all superstition, right? And all woo. Uh, you have completely focused on Islam. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're both atheists, right? Yeah. We both don't believe in any uh, religion or any dogma or any superstition. Um, we both agree that it doesn't... Anybody... Nobody... Sh if somebody focuses on one religion... That's cool, and anybody that wants to focus on all religions, that's cool too. Like just because I'm doing all religions, I'm not saying, oh, if you focus on Islam, you're not doing your job right, or if you focus on Christianity, you're not doing atheism. You're not a proper atheist. You're not a true atheist if you don't attack all religions. That's bullshit. Anybody can focus on whatever they have more experience in, or they're more passionate about, or just more interested in right well I, I kind of think that if you if you focus on all religions then you are my enemy uh, <laughs> yeah. no, no just kidding seriously yeah yeah right. we can we can we can have any kinds of opinions we can focus on whatever we want to focus on focus sorry on. go on yeah another thing we agree on is that and i know a lot of people don't agree on this is that among living religions right now islam is the most harmful absolutely Right. So just because I say I attack all religions, that doesn't mean I think all of them are equally harmful. I think all of them are equally untrue, 
but that doesn't mean they are all equally harmful. Mm -hmm. They're not equally harmful, but they're equally untrue, right? Because mm -hmm. true or untrue is a binary thing. Um, it doesn't something if it's untrue, it doesn't become more untrue, right? It's just uh, that's why they're all equally mm -hmm. untrue. Mm -hmm. But the level of harm Islam causes, and the reason why Islam is the most harmful one is because it's the most political religion of all. Yeah, uh, right. So we also agree on that. Um, and well, I would I would say that. Um... I might I might just be too particular about this, but <laughs> yeah, we we agree in the essence that the claim to divinity in all religions as we have them right now are uh, that the claim to divinity is equally wrong in all of them. Right. I wouldn't say that all of them are equally uh, flawed. All of all of them are equally logically wrong, or uh, all of them are completely equally wrong. But I would say uh, their claim to divinity is in all of them is wrong. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, if you were to become very Regarding how flawed something are, if we become, if you want to become really mathematical about it, and people are like, how could you be mathematical about it? But I can. I will. Uh, yeah. And there, the, you could. I mean, this is just becoming very nerdy about it. But the number of <laughs> claims that you make, I think, um, statistically make. So, for example, Mormonism is more statistically Im um, improbable than Christianity because it has all the Absolutely. claims of Christianity plus extra. So. Anyway, probability wise it looks like a it looks like a western version of islam to me kind of <laughs> right anyways but that's i don't want to get into probability <laughs> calculations but other than that i think the main uh, thing that we might have a disagreement on is that you have some you do like if a few things about christianity yeah right yeah, yeah. and i am I go as far as saying there's nothing good about Christianity, yeah. right? Yeah. So, and I think that's where we disagree on. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, so, basically, to see what again, people are like, "Oh, Armin is right," of you know, you're, you know, apostate prophet is wrong. By the way, did we? Did you introduce yourself? We didn't. Like, yeah, we didn't do that. Ah, oh, fuck! Uh, I'm such you, a horrible host. You, you stormed right into it, but I, I don't. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Okay, for the few people that I think everybody that follows me must already know you, but for the few people that don't, can you let them know and where they can find your channel? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, I'm uh, known as apostate prophet. I'm Ridvan Idemir. Uh, I have a YouTube channel right here on YouTube. Uh, YouTube channel on YouTube, whatever. <laughs> uh, that's how we started uh, knowing each other as well. Um, I'm mainly on YouTube. I'm also. I have also recently become very active on Twitter. I have become. I, I make a lot of a lot of uh, tweets there about the Quran, about uh, Islam, or sometimes about political issues uh, surrounding Islam and other uh, topics. But yeah, I'm a former Muslim, uh, and I. I think I think my main thing is that I I'm just very fierce about Islam. Right. I used I I, really? I choose to be very very brutally blunt about Islam, and I understand that many people don't prefer to do that because people respect boundaries. I just don't really care very much, and. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, that's who I am. Uh, and your Twitter got recently banned by Twitter for calling Islam a violent religion, which is yeah, it was ridiculous. It was a tweet where um, where I just said, what was that? I just said, oh, I, w I was mocking something. Some some Muslim girl w uh, made a tweet saying, uh, my mother didn't even allow us to kill spiders, and people go on saying Islam is a violent religion. <laughs> so I retweeted that and said, um, of course, Islam allows the killing. Islam, sorry, Islam orders the killing of apostates, homosexuals blasphemers this this and that uh, Islam also orders to spread the religion by the sword but Islam doesn't allow to kill spiders therefore Islam is peace and Twitter banned me for that which is one of the most ridiculous cases of a ban on Twitter I've ever seen because if what you said it's actually in Islam is factually true I have never yeah. I thought it was a mistake I was sure you're gonna get your Twitter account back but you you did, and you had to make a new yeah. one, which is absolutely ridiculous. So just I, to I make... make a new one, it, I, it was I had two separate accounts. One yeah. was the apostate profit account, which was the you know the the brand, right? And one was my personal account. So the, the brand was banned, the the most active one. So I just switched to my personal one, started using that instead. Absolutely ridiculous. Because I'm I'm not allowed to create a new account. They would ban that too. But since this account was existent already, they can't ban this over that. You know. Right. Absolutely. So, guys, please go follow him so that you may, we make up because he had like lots of followers on that account. So that's very sad. 
Oh, it's ridiculous. Anyways, going back to uh, Christianity, right? So, but again, what I wanted to tell people is that no matter, like, people try to, when people follow, um, you know, two people and they think they agree with one of them, sometimes they comment in a way that they want to put, like, oh, that guy is an idiot. I agree with this person. I mean, I don't. I, people don't understand that when we see those comments, if if they say that about me against you, um, I don't appreciate that because we they can see that we're having a friendly conversation here. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the comments in support of me when they belittling the person they they agree with, I don't I don't want that kind of support, right? Like this is just a friendly disagreement. Uh, I just want to make that clear. I don't appreciate when people try to make, yeah. if you know, like we're not destroying each other or anything like that. We're just trying to understand each other more. And again, that, that was my point in the thing. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no, go ahead. The, uh, I, I think we decided to have this conversation after I made that uh, one video where I decide where I explained why I don't criticize other religions beside Islam, and I was kind of making that point in that video that uh, you know I get attacked very often by uh, by some by some. Uh, anti-theist atheist for not criticizing all religions equally i get also attacked by other people by other uh, religious groups for you know my, my for my for my cynical comments and whatever but uh the thing is um that that's just the only problem there is i, I don't you, you have a completely different view on religions i have a completely different view on religions but that is absolutely no problem for me i mean we can come together we can we can have our differences we can still come together and laugh and and talk yeah. about our, our differences talk about things we have in common which is completely normal i mean just because we disagree on one issue doesn't mean we disagree uh as people you know with each other right completely that that we disregard or insult each other yeah it's, but it's even if, all black even and if white. We, and even if we disagreed completely we could still have, yeah. we could have still be friends right of course of course yeah. yeah okay so christianity what do you like about christianity <laughs> 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 well the thing is um I think I explained before several times. I, I know why you're stuck on that. Mm -hmm. It's uh, I explained several times before that I have sympathy with Christianity. I explained that in that video as well. I have sympathy with Christians. I like Christianity generally as a religion. Uh, I want to make a difference there. It's not that I, you know, I don't, I don't know how much that difference can be understood. I don't know how much I can express that difference. But when I say I, I like Christianity, I, what I mean is that I like Christianity as a religion. You know, among religions, I like Christianity. It doesn't mean that I uh, that I necessarily believe that Christianity is a perfect way of living or a, uh, an amazing way of living. Although to to certain degrees, I do agree with that as well. Ooh. But uh, what I what I say is that <laughs> <laughs> what I what I what I say is that among among religions. I like Christianity. What I like about Christianity is um, there are several things. I'm not very great at thinking of examples, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, certain things that I occasionally have in mind are um, it's 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 theological differences from Judaism and Islam, for example, two religions that we have at hand that are very uh, strict. Uh, but. Actually, let me give more priority to to the moral difference between between Islam and Christianity and, and Judaism and Christianity. I think I think morally, uh, Christianity is what is what gives me the feeling of, you know, is is what makes me have sympathy for for the religion. When I look at the time in which Christianity emerged, and I look at the surroundings, I look at the religions that uh, that were around at the same time, at the way of thinking that was around at the same time, or even if I look at uh, six hundred years after Christianity in Arabia, just a little bit to the south, and I compare uh, the mindset of Christianity to the mindset of those religions, then I think Christianity uh, has brought something very revolutionary in its own time. You know, uh, something morally very revolutionary. Uh, this is something that is very often pointed out in the New Testament, in the Gospels, and also in the in the letters of Paul, for example, that the th that the Jewish leaders of its time were so much strict about uh, about applying the law, about about following the law, about uh, ruling over everything with strict laws. And when Christianity came, Christianity introduced uh, completely unorthodox things like not just punishing an, the adulterer, or not just punishing uh, people who make certain choices 
is not just completely distancing yourself from people you consider sinners. That was completely something uh, unacceptable in, in 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 Judaism at that time to to sit down with people who have you know who are who are heretics. Jews were thought Jews were uh, taught at the time to be very fair with with Judaism and Jews as well. They were taught to uh, to love to love people even if they are not Jews but they were also taught to you know to to have a to have a distance from people who are not Jews or who have a distance from people who don't believe in the same thing who don't share the same culture who don't share the same traditions to be uh, separate from them Christianity kind of overruled that with the uh, with the arrival of of Jesus whether you consider that uh, an actual historical thing or not um, there are so many examples that we can that we can, can give to that, but, but can you said, give one? Because the things that you're saying, um, I mean, it wasn't revolutionary. I mean, Islam was revolutionary as well. Revolutionary doesn't always mean good. Revolutionary could be revolutionary. Communism was revolutionary. No, I, I'm I'm in revolutionary in a positive sense. Right. Okay, but but a lot of the things that, I mean, when it comes to ethics and morality, I don't think. Um, I can't think of a single thing that Christianity contributed that is good or that we haven't had a better version of it before Christianity for thousands of years before I, Christianity. I wouldn't I'm, I'm not I'm not going for the argument. I know it's it's an argument that is very often brought up uh, contrary to what I'm saying is that, uh, that that certain morals existed long before Christianity. So Christianity better version of it. Way better version of it. Okay, fair enough. Even if you say that, what I'm talking about is the comparison between the religions, between the religions between the three religions hand, Judaism and Christianity for example. In yeah. Uh, Christianity emerged in a Jewish environment. You have to uh, consider that it emerged in a Jewish environment which had very, very strict laws. Uh, yeah, but, but but if I but I mean AIDS is like really shitty disease, right? But if I put it next to cancer, all of a sudden AIDS does, AIDS doesn't look that bad anymore. Fair <laughs> enough. But I'm I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that Christianity is perfect. I'm not su su right. suggesting that Christianity is awesome. I'm suggesting that uh, Christianity, compared to those different beliefs, that's what I was uh, going on about going on about when I was saying that Christianity was uh, morally revolutionary for its time and its environment. What I'm saying is that uh, is that f for its time and its environment uh, among among Judaism. I mean that's how Christianity became popular with that message. You know, to uh, to reject what the what the Pharisees do and to uh, to follow this. Uh, Jesus, the Messiah, who said, uh, "He who is without sin, sin cast the first stone," which was what, which which is which is something that we can, even if we don't believe in it, consider uh, revolutionary for its environment. If we which, if we think about Islam, for example, mm -hmm. Islam came six hundred years later. We would normally uh, naturally expect that if a religion comes six hundred years later, it would be uh, you know morally a little bit better, more more improvement, more modern, but it's not. Yeah, but 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 if you but but then but you keep comparing Christianity to to Judaism because if you say if you use the same logic to Christianity, Christianity came many many years after the great philosopher of ancient Greece, and they had uh, they then you would say like well they after so many years after or so many great thinkers had so much more advanced philosophies on ethics, uh, on morality, you come up with something so basic, so simplistic, so childish like the Bible, Can't you, couldn't you have done some improvement on your laws and you know advice compared to, a, those, to those great thinkers of ancient Greeks? It's a very unfair comparison, though, because uh, as, as I'm saying, I mean, the world wasn't back then as it is right now. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that, uh, that Christianity was competing with, 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 with philosophies that were uh, popular in Rome, for example, or in Greek realms where people didn't follow anything like Judaism. We're thinking about a time where, uh, where where thoughts very often stayed within very limited geographical regions, and uh, in the case of Christianity, for example, in its emergence, I'm not talking about uh, later times of of when Paul spread it, of, of when when Paul spread it further, or when through the writings of Paul it spread into the the Roman Empire. I'm talking about about uh, the point of emergence within. Uh, the realms of, of Judaism and Jewish culture. That's what I'm talking about. Of, of course, there are different cultures that have been much better. I admire many aspects of even even Germanic uh, culture, which is uh, very primitive and uh, to many uh, extents from many aspects, very barbaric. I think that, uh, that, that Germanic, Nordic uh, people had some very good qualities that were overruled by worse Christian qualities. I would definitely say that. Oh. 
So yeah, okay, but um, when you say that environment, so the your own the only it seems like the only way to make Christianity look good is by comparing it to Judaism and Islam. And it's to, it seems to, to me that you're suggesting. And you're saying that was the environment. But the thing is that that's not really the environment where Christianity grew. Because Christianity was a small, tiny cult before it, the Romans picked it up, right? Mm -hmm. And when the Romans picked it up and it became a way, you know, world religion, um, then the environment was not Judaism anymore. The environment was... Of you course, know, but that's, that's the Romans the, the Romans had a different religion before. But that's why I'm saying that's why I'm saying at the point of emergence. I'm not saying I'm not saying right. when it spread, you know. Yeah, but then that you're talking about a really isolated tiny area. No, but uh, the point here was uh, I I just went into we are stuck in this because I went into yeah. uh, into you know I was talking about the stuff that I find good about Christianity and right. then I went into uh, the example of the time of its emergence and how it was revolutionary at that time. That was only an example. It yeah, wasn't, but it wasn't a general thing. But to <laughs> yeah, but to make it revolutionary, then you have to look at this like this tiny p place. I know, I know, yeah, I know. Yeah. But that's but that's what I was about. I was right. just okay. giving the example of how revolutionary it was in in that time in that region. Right. That's what I was about. It it that that's not the general message that I'm that I'm trying right. to get. Okay, what's the general message? So what's, sorry, sorry. <laughs> My bad. I, I, <laughs> no no my bad my bad sorry sorry okay <laughs> no, no no problem it's it's okay. it's uh i went very far into that so it's it's totally understandable we got a little bit uh confusing right. there but um i don't know i i would i would say as said uh i like christianity as a religion uh in the realm of religions i don't necessarily think that it's a perfect way of life otherwise i would be living that life but i i like certain certain qualities about it like um I don't know, it, it's teachings, it's emphasis on love and forgiveness, for example. I know you will come out and talk about hell now. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I well, mean, isn't that not a legit point to bring up? Like, hey, love everybody. Basically, God is saying... I, I, for would, I, would have love and, I would have a long discussion about that with you. But yeah. No, I mean, God is telling you, like, hey, you should forgive everybody, but I'm going to hold a grudge against everybody that didn't worship me for fucking eternity. Like, do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. Like, that's, I mean, that's, that's, yeah, go on. And that's one main main point I disagree with Christianity. I think I have, I have also been in... Uh, harsh discussions about that with uh people closer to me uh about 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 how i find christianity flawed and what i don't like about christianity and how i and why i don't believe in christianity why i can't believe in in the god proposed by christianity and my main problem is the concept of hell and i can never get out of that no uh no christian can sit in front of me and convince me that that with the concept of hell as taught by christians as forever taught by christians god was uh number one one good and number two real and the two just eliminate each other if one of them is not true then the other is also wrong right uh which is why i would never which is why i can't ever find myself believe in this believe in this religion i totally agree with the concept of of hell and how how wrong it is but i would say um in terms of how it advises people you know I have to I have to separate that. I mean, I have no I don't gain anything from saying that uh, that, that I like certain aspects about Christianity. There is absolutely no gain for me in that. I actually become very unpopular in many circles like 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 yours, for example, when I, when I say that. But no, I think I think if pe okay, honestly, if people are following you because they want you because you're a source that 100 percent agrees with them. Then you know that's not a that's not really a, you know I mean people should understand like if if they were like oh I used to follow you and now you said this so I I'm so disappointed well you're going to be a very lonely person for the rest of your life because you're never going to find anybody that agrees with everything you say so unfortunately I have that so many people have that, like tell me uh, why well, I followed you so far but because of this and this uh, I'm just I'm unfollowing you now fuck them. You know, Fuck yeah, them. So seriously, uh, like, I, I, don't, I don't really care. Like, tell them, like, I didn't uh, tell them. Oh, really? I didn't even notice that you left. <laughs> Just, oh my God. Right. I, I'm, I'm trying to be respectful with everyone's position, with everyone's position of even anti-theism, which I, which I very honestly don't find reasonable at all. But I'm, I'm, I'm anti-theism. 
yeah, I don't find anti-theism reasonable at all. Right. Uh, but but I but I but I have respect for it, and I have respect for uh, a, comp a purely atheistic world of view. I have respect for a deistic one. I have respect for a, for a religious one. I have my own thoughts. I call myself a free thinker. But I went so much off track. What were we talking about? We were talking about. Oh, okay. I'm gonna come back to why you're anti theism. But you were talking about the oh, yeah. good messages of Christianity. Okay. Yeah. For love and forgiveness. That's what I was talking about. And then we went. We jumped into hell and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, that that's for example a quality that I like very much about Christianity. I mean, Christianity is. Um, Christianity is is a religion that uh, that that teaches people. Uh, if you look at at its adherents, if you uh, meet religious Christians, for example, I was uh, a very religious Muslim. I was very often very deep in uh, certain in certain uh, very religious Muslim environments, Islamic environments. Mm -hmm. Switching from there and coming here and getting into religious Christian environments, there is a great difference in that uh, in that Christians emphasize. Uh, the feelings, the emotions, and the concept of love and forgiveness, as taught by Christianity, which uh, which very strictly teaches to forgive your enemies and and love your neighbors. Which you I think shouldn't. that's a very good quote. You call. shouldn't forgive your enemies. It's a it's a very it's a bullshit advice. You can you can it, talk about whether that's logical or not, but you know. I mean, it's <laughs> like is it, this is this is how the Catholic priests who rape children get away with the, what they're doing because they're like, oh, if Jesus forgives them, we should forgive them as well. No, fuck that, right? What are you talking about? We shouldn't forgive everybody. Yeah, I mean, if you... And, and also another message of Christianity, love everyone, everyone. Honestly, if you love everybody, then your love is meaningless. Like, are you serious? Like, are you... Could, could you really love everybody? That doesn't make any sense. Your, your mind is not wired in a way that you could love everybody it's impossible ask okay and mm -hmm. you're gonna feel like you're failing at it i mean the the whole purpose of it is for you to fail at it and feel guilty about failing again and you have to come back to the church and ask forgiveness that's why that's why religions always make maceration uh, a sin because you have to always feel shitty about you know when you say these these there's warm, fuzzy messages in religion that you'd be like, oh, that's so sweet. And when, when you think about it for two seconds, like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. There, and Like in Islam, for example, right? I mean, Islam also has these warm, fuzzy messages in there, right? Is not it like by far, I would say. Not, not even comparable. Okay, for example, right? Let's say in Islam. Again, and you know, I, I hate Islam, right? But I think these, these sugar coatings that people give an example in Islam or in Christianity, I don't see that as like okay, everything except uh, except that. No, I think these are actually what makes these memes more dangerous because they, this is the PR front of this of this you know poison pill. It's a sugar, it's a thin layer of sugar around a poison pill that is going to kill you, right? So Islam, for example, has an obsession over taking care of orphans. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you see it in the Quran all the time as well, of course. Yeah. So, I mean, is that a good message? I believe it is a good message. I believe to to an extent it is a good message. Of, of course it has uh I don't know, you could you could argue of, on on whether it is uh completely logical if it should be emphasized that much or not, but I think it is a it is a good message, of course, to be fair. Right. And does that make Islam a good religion? No, I don't believe it does. Right. But that's, but that's what I do. I um, When I think about Christianity, I think about all the good things that outweigh all the bad things. And I see so many good things that, that, uh, that, I, think, that I think Christianity is mostly an okay religion. I, don't, I can't say the same thing about Islam. I can't, I can't possibly uh, take the good qualities of Islam and excuse all the horrible stuff that's coming out of Islam. I think there's a huge difference. I mean, okay, Christianity is pro-torture, anti-free speech, pro-slavery, anti-democracy, against equal opportunity. Uh, what? How? What? What You're does it have? What does it have that would outweigh all of this nonsense? You're talking about many uh, qualities that are not directly asserted by Christianity as commands or orders upon people. No, uh, no, 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 that, no that, values that is actually has versus against. Well, it, it it wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would never say that Christianity, uh, for example, is for torture. It is. It is not for torture. It is, it is, it is, not, for, it is not practically for torture. It's for eternal torture. Well, that's different. That is different. Yeah, that's worse. 
I would, of course it is. You, yeah. you could say it's worse, but on, on what level is it worse? It's not worse on the level that humans go out and torture people. In fact, uh, we, we have many historical, uh, historical Christian figures, main Christian figures who objected to that practice forever. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, but you shouldn't talk about Christians and Muslims, right? Because I could, we should talk about the Quran and the Bible, right? Because we can find Muslim communities that are the most loving communities that you could find. You could find that, right? You could find yeah. barbaric. I mean, you could find it. You could find loving Christians. You could find the most dickish asshole Christians that shove, you know, and you could find the worst atheists possible. You yeah. know, you could find a atheists that killed and committed genocide, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I just, so when it comes to examples, I think I don't look at Christians and Muslims because uh, you know, Christians and Muslims and atheists are influenced by many things, not just their religion or lack of religion. I look at the direct, go directly to the source. Of course, I, st I stumbled here, but I'm actually very much uh, always on the view that that we shouldn't judge uh, religions by their history, but we should we should judge them by by the religion itself, by the book itself. That's uh, right. what I usually emphasize. I yeah, kind of yeah. stumbled a bit right right now with the whole torture thing, but you get the point. I don't think right. there is torture in the in the scripture at all. All right, so I mean, technically, there's no torture um, for this life, but it's advice. It says that me and you are deserving of eternal torture, right? I mean, if you, if some people like defend it, well, at least it's not telling other humans to do it. <clears throat> you don't believe in hell, so what's the problem? I mean, imagine if I went and said, you know what? I nobody should torture any Jews, but I think Jews deserve torture. I mean, that's <laughs> that's a that's a fucked up thing to say, yeah, right? Yeah. So. Um, and I think that's the Bible, what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying that me and you deserve to be tortured just because we don't agree that that Jesus is the, you know, king, king in heaven. But I, th I think you're, I think you're too much about the torture part. To be very, very honest, I mean, torture is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, 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 no. Human rights. <laughs> no, no. I don't. I don't mean. I don't. I don't. I'm not trying to say that. Uh, well, so what if it tortures? You know, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> what I'm saying is that is that uh, is that hell, hellfire, and torture is by no means anywhere near the center of of Christian belief and theology and preaching. It is not. I mean. We come, we come from Revelation, of course. But we come from we come from uh, we come from the, from the from from the Islamic religion, from an Islamic mindset. You know very well if you have read the Quran how much how much hell is emphasized in the Quran. It is yeah. everywhere on every single damn page. Yeah. You know it is, uh, and and the believers will be tortured, and the believers will uh, uh, sorry disbelievers will be this and this, and the disbelievers will be whatever. Yes. So all, obsessed with us, obsessed yeah, with us, all the time. While uh, in the Old Testament, there, there is, there is no actual description of uh, of oh, the hell as we know it. And right. the New Testament has only, uh, in total, if we if we go per number of how many times it is brought up, it is like three times or so, and that's it. And it's it's yeah, not but even that's a, a really big deal. I, I know, I know, but it's it's not in the center of Christian teaching, and it's. But, but again, if you again, if you, if you can, if you compare anything with Islam, it starts looking good. Okay, if you if you if you if you compare dog shit to Islam, all of a sudden dog shit starts looking really good, right? So that's not, not fair to keep bringing in Islam. I agree. Okay, compared to Islam, there's not no living religion is as shitty as Islam. We agree on that. My main uh, point is that is that is that it's it's very much in the background of what Christianity actually is. The whole health thing. That was my point. It's not only comparing it to Islam. Okay, the main the main p point of Christianity. It's actually it's kind of hidden in the background, but it's the entire point. Okay, not the Old Testament, but the New Testament. Okay, the the idea of hell was not really popular yet. When the Old Testament was being written, it was it, it's actually uh, it's actually our fault. The Persians popularized hell. It's the Zoroastrians. Oh, yeah. It's the oh, Zoroastrians, yeah. right? So, but and I think the Jews actually might have gotten that idea eventually when they were you know, uh, anyways, from the Persians. There's some uh -huh. scholars that suggest that, but anyways, from um, the whole idea, the main teaching of the New Testament and the Christian and Christianity, is that the only way. Through he to heaven, is through is by believing in Jesus, mm -hmm. is by accepting him as Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And by the way, there's only one other destination to go to if you don't end up in heaven, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So it's in the background, but it is the entire message. 
-hmm. it is the main it keeps focusing on the fact that you the way through salvation is jesus even if it just only reminded you one or two tw twice once or twice or uh, three times what happens to you uh, if you don't go if you don't go to heaven the fact is it's kind of like a passive aggressive it's like a you know uh, it's like a threat right there in the background right the, that's the only other alternative hell is the only other alternative right but okay the point is, the thing is, though, you know, I, I evaluate religions mostly by uh, by how its beliefs impact society and by okay. how its beliefs impact uh, the mindsets of people believing in that religion. Because if there is if there is something about the religion itself that we find ridiculous or stupid or wrong, what is the point of 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 being stuck too much about it if it doesn't impact society in right. a way as much? When I, when we think about Christianity, uh, in Christianity, the the the, the logic of hell and salvation is not that is not, is not that you should uh, stay away from people who will go to hell you should hate people who go to hell people will go to hell God will burn people and so on that's not the main thing of Christianity the main thing of Christianity is that we need to be saved you know salvation and grace is the main message of Christianity people right. go around trying to save people from going to hell and going to Jesus so th there is there is a big difference in how that uh, reflects itself on society and I think that is important Great point. So let's t let's talk about how Christianity impacts fucks up with our uh, standards <laughs> on a personal level and then also on a society level, right? Okay. Um, on a personal level, again going back to salvation and you know um, and how this is affects people's behavior. I think what Christianity does, one of the things Christianity does most effectively, is that it gives you a license to sin it gives you an it gives you a get out of jail free card for being the shittiest possible human you could be and not to be not to worry about it right and the fact that christians are not like most christians are not like that is the same reason why many muslims are moderate right it has nothing to do with christianity that christians are as many christians are good people the thing is that according to the teachings of christianity let's say me and you let's say i commit genocide, rape a whole bunch of people, murder a whole bunch of babies, and then right before I die, say, oh, I was a, such a horrible person, Jesus, I say, I, I found Jesus, please forgive me, and all of that, uh, and Jesus saves me, and I go to heaven. But if you, if you were the most charitable, charitable person out there, didn't harm a fly, Nothing, you know, ev good to you. Everybody that you, know, everybody speaks positively of you, of you. But you didn't believe in Jesus. You don't get that salvation, right? And you go to hell. So I and the, yeah. So and that the reason why that fucks up with people on a personal level is because this is why people think that they, you know, it doesn't matter how society judges them. Jesus has forgiven me. Jesus has forgiven me. And this, they can excuse their worst behavior. And, and also Christianity doesn't see a difference between sins, right? Like so, some people steal candy. It does. It some does, but people, it doesn't, yeah. I, some I get you, people I get lie you. to their mom. Some people commit genocide. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Like it doesn't, it does, it's like all, all, we're all sinners. We're all sinners. And it's all forgiven through Jesus, right? Okay. I, I have two objections to that. Okay. The, the first objection is that, is that uh, we're not really talking about all Christianity here in the sense that, you know, when, when we say that, uh, that it forgives all kinds of sin and you can do whatever you want and then go to, except, go to heaven. Except doubting the Holy Spirit, I guess. Yeah. Or, but, but, um, we w we wouldn't necessarily uh, really say this if we talked about about Catholicism as a whole, or we, or if we talked about about Orthodox Christianity as a whole, or even if we talked about many many Protestant reformist uh, denominations as a whole. We would we wouldn't be able to say this because many of them believe that uh, that certain sins that you commit in your life, that certain uh, sins that that you have and commit, will uh, definitely have an impact on you after you die, or they will even you know they will be a uh, be a barrier between you and God after you die. You will stay in a, in a place where you will be... Uh, well, I'm not judging them. I'm judging the Bible. The Bible says that if you believe in him, you will have salvation. Well, so does, so does Islam, to be very honest. The Quran says the same the same thing as well. No, no, uh, no. Not, not it doesn't. The Quran thinks even most, most Muslims are... I mean, based on the Quran and the Hadith, 
uh, even if you're a Muslim, you could still end up in hell for a very of long course, time. Of course, but it right. also says contradictory that uh, uh, that that everyone who has a little bit of you know faith in his heart will be saved. It will, will right. be will go. By the way, have... I'm not defending Islam. By the way, why do I know, you I know, Islam I know. here? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I think I have an obsession with Islam. I don't know. No, no what I, what I was meaning what I was meaning is that uh, is that of course. Uh, the the Bible says that, but uh, the thing is, the Quran says that it says that too. The Quran makes statements like that as well. But but in practice, yeah. well, religion fuck the Quran. Is, okay, yeah. But, but what, why why I'm bringing this up is that is that the main religion, the main theology, the main belief doesn't necessarily go into that direction. Many uh, Christian denominations, actual Christian denominations that represent Christianity, don't preach that you can do whatever you want. You can go out, kill people, you can commit mass murder, and this and that, and you will uh, directly, without any doubt, go to heaven and be saved and and sit next to Jesus in heaven somewhere. You know, uh, they don't necessarily teach that. But uh, even I just want to make that point. We can't talk about Christianity like that as a whole. But even if that was so, I get your point. Okay, Christianity teaches that if you uh, follow Jesus, that if you believe in Jesus, you will be saved and you will go to heaven and be together with the Lord and the kingdom of heaven, whatever. But uh, I don't believe we can judge religions by uh, by what the less religious person within the faith would end up with. Because if we judged Islam by that, Islam would be a wonderful religion. What I'm talking about is that Christianity what? preaches you preaches you to be uh, to be the best you can be. To uh to Where? be uh, Christianity to teaches you to be, you know, to where take in, the qualities where of in, where where in Christianity does it teach that? Well, I'm ta I'm talking about the qualities. I'm talking about mm -hmm. uh, God has God has presented these qualities, and you should follow these qualities. You should follow the example of Jesus. You should you should uh, you should forgive. You should be patient. You should be gentle. You should never never. Uh, but it wasn't any of that uh, gentle. Are you like he cursed the tree just because it didn't have fruit in the wrong season? <laughs> <laughs> it's, right? a, it's, an, it's an interesting story, of course. But he was generally gentle. But he said I he said I came. I I'm not here to bring peace. I am. Here here to bring sword he said whoever loves his own okay, children okay okay i am an i am fully an atheist and i will never believe in christianity okay, correct. tell me oh, tell me what's okay. that right but that is completely taken out of context you know that very well okay. that is completely taken out of context uh the general the general uh, what what people understand from that what what you understand when you read uh the scripture is when he says that he uh he brings the he brings the sword or he brings disagreement or he causes uh parents and children to hate each other what he means is that uh he comes in an environment where people don't believe him and if you believe in and, and follow him then you will have uh, animosity among each other that's that, that's what's basically meant that's what every Christian understands but, from. But he, he also somewhere else mentioned that that's what he wants because he says that if you love your, if you don't uh, love me instead of your own family, then you're not with me. You're not of a course, follower of me. I want to give Islam as an example here as well because I don't not, not because I want to compare it to Islam but because I want to bring us closer to the logic of what uh, of what is of what is meant there mm -hmm. um, you know I Islam has the same thing where uh, where in where it where it although it tells you that you should never curse your parents and you should respect and love your parents it also tells you that that uh, that you should you know despise or they should they should go against your parents and never love them more than you love uh than you love than you love allah or than you love muhammad because because it came in a, at a time where people who converted to islam and people who followed islam were supposedly persecuted by uh by by many people around them including their parents this in the same sense what christianity does and what jesus apparently did according to the scripture and that is the main christian belief is that it came in a time where jesus was rejected and persecuted and christians yeah. were rejected and persecuted and uh um, yeah, but, in, but Christian. But, be, well, why is he demanding that? Why is he like just be, hate your uh, hate your own? Like you should love me more than your own dad. Like what the fuck is wrong with you? Just jealous much? No, because what it's referring to is that. Uh, no, he's saying that you should do that. Like you should love. Of course, me of course, more more well, than your dad. Well, s say this. You are. Uh, I give you a message. I claim that that this is uh, the absolute message from God, and it is actually real. Let's say it is actually real. Okay, let's not doubt my message right now. Let's say it is actually real. That you will you will be saved by what I'm telling you. But if you follow me, your parents will hate you and will uh, reject you, will uh, throw you out, and they will say we will only accept you if you. Uh, 
if you come back to what we demand you to do. Uh, and, and I'm telling you then, well, uh, will you listen to me and we'll be saved forever or will you listen to them? What I have to tell you uh, in, order to, in order for you to listen to me is in that situation, in that context, exactly, uh, you should love me and what I'm saying more than, wh more than, uh, more than what they stand for and what they are saying because yeah. this will save you and you will eventually save them that yeah. that's the, that's the general message that is understood from 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 those from those passages you know no one who follows the scripture understands from that that you should hate your parents yeah he to me when i read the bible he comes up as this passive aggressive boyfriend right <laughs> 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 he's just talking sweet but he's also like he's kind of threatening you in a way that, in a very positive way, like it's like if it's Islam, is that boyfriend is like, if you don't do this, you know, I'm gonna fuck you up, I'm gonna kill you. But Christianity is like, you know, if I love you so much, if you don't love me back, it's your own fault that these things are gonna happen to you. I don't want that for you. I love you. Like you're like, <laughs> oh Jesus, like you know, it's 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 very much the same. You know how like when a when a uh, you know, when the boyfriend hits the, you know, the girlfriend and he says like you made me do this you know you made you you chose this for a boy uh, and the Christians Christians tell that to every time I bring it to uh, Christians are like hey you know how could you justify hell you're like you you're choosing hell like he created it like he created hell it's like anyways I don't want to get back to hell I, I want to you know um I know when I say this, I will probably uh, upset some Christians, you know, uh, just as as I usually ups upset atheists. But uh, I I, th I I just think about religions, uh, especially also Christianity, as uh, things of their time, you know, uh, thoughts and movements of their time. Christianity needed this. Christianity needed to 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 spread its message that way. Uh, Christ it it was it was the most common thing to st uh, to talk about to talk about uh, the hereafter, to talk about hell, to talk about this and that, and. In order to change society, and I think I think no one would ob, uh, object to the statement that that uh, that the message, if you read the Bible, if you read the New Testament, there is more good than bad in it. And uh, in order to, no. of course, there is. There is more good than bad in it. There is no. more societal societal positive change than negative change in it. In no one Bible, can contest it. I would debate that for no. In the, I'm uh, saying in the New Testament. Oh I, no, I, no, I in the New Testament, I would argue. I actually argue that the no, New, I, Testament I New Testament is. Testament. In the New Testament is worse than the Old Testament, in my opinion. What? Yes. <laughs> the New Testament is way more barbaric than the Old Testament. What? Yeah. Are you, are you talking about uh, the end time things? No, I'm talking about the hell. The Old Testament doesn't have hell in there. Again, going back to hell, uh, because because the Old Testament is like God, God, you know, commits genocide, kills, you know, ev kills everybody, including children, with a flood. Well, they died. At least now they're in peace, right? And he's like he tells people, he tells the Jews, go kill this entire nation, kill every fucking living thing, even including the trees, apparently. Um, and like, okay, now they're dead. But the New Testament is when you're introduced to the eternal, the concept of eternal torture, right? That's way more barbaric than. But um, well, it looks like you're upset about something that you don't believe will happen. No, I'm well, of course, like, <laughs> it, no, it's, what, what, what is the point of that? Well, I mean, you could look at a fictional character and say it's evil. Like you could look at Voldemort. Like, yeah, that's an evil character. It doesn't have to. You don't have to believe that it's true for you to understand that Voldemort is of course, the evil of character in the story. Yeah. But the point. But the point is that's why I brought up this thing earlier. How how religious uh, belief impacts its uh, impacts society and how it reflects itself on society. You know, uh, in Christianity, for example, the concept of hell is something that uh, that in many ways doesn't reflect itself at all in society in any way in terms of hostilities between people, for example. It doesn't do that well let, let me give you some Why examples you well let me give you okay so well i'm upset about i'm upset about it because of the class it introduces a class structure right uh just like you know just like hinduism islam and christianity it's all about like with the real impact on society even though we're not going to burn in hell is the fact that our, our tribe is the superior class to non-Christians, right? Same with so, for example, when again, you, if you want to compare, that's what Christianity teaches. No, it, it does. It, I mean, Christianity doesn't I mean, teach that, that people should be uh, unequal based on whether they follow Christianity. No, or no. Not. The understanding is that I'm not going to torture non-Christians, but these are the people 
that will end up in hell and we are the people that will end up in heaven that already the the main psychological impact on on and this world is that we are the superior class here right we but i thought we were talking people. about what the but I thought we were talking about what the religion itself teaches, not what the people uh, perceive or believe. No, or do... but you're, you're talking about the impact on society, and and, and 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 you know. So basically, the impact on society of all, almost all religions is to create that super tribe, right? So, for example, if you want to compare things to Islam, then, like for example, when Muhammad comes and says, like, we should, we we're all equal in Islam, right? People, Muslims say, like, look, he's teaching a message of equality. No, because no, he's saying Muslims are superior to Muslims. Of course, he, he teaches you that, like, he's just create, he's eliminating tribes, but he's creating a super tribe yeah, that is yeah. superior to other tribes, right? So it's religion as a whole does create that class structure, right? And you know. It, just saying these people are damned, these people are, you know, th those messages does have a psychological impact on people, and it has had throughout history. The, but the, but the it, point here is Christianity but, doesn't teach that people who don't believe or who will go to hell are inferior to you. It, on the opposite, I, I, I just I just listened to a, to a preacher recently, I mean, which was a... I mean, how do, you, how do you not see telling people that these people are deserving of eternal torture and you are not anything other than you are superior to them. I mean, that's well, it, pretty... You don't, you don't see that because the religion explicitly teaches that you are all equal. The, the religion explicitly, te explicitly teaches that that uh, other people... This is a concept that comes from Judaism as well. It comes from Judaism and is emphasized in Christianity that to love uh, to love the other as, as you love yourself and that's, that you are uh, equal in front of... Jewish. In, what? As long as they're Jewish. No, Judaism. Judaism clearly says that you should. Uh, it teaches you should, you should kill all the other no, tribes. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It does. It, it, that, it, that's a, that's a historical thing. It's not like the Quran. It's the historical thing where God guides about, people. And, okay, well, if you're talking about the Jewish part, you're talking about the part that is teaching you to stone people. Like, hey, everybody is equal. Love everybody equally, and also stone them to death if they commit adultery, or no, burn them, no, if, uh, kill them if I'm they're not, witches. I'm not talking about sin. Uh, I'm not talking also, about sin and societal corruption. That's a different issue. Slave, if you beat your slaves, make sure they don't die. Like, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, I'm not but talking about societal corruption. <laughs> I'm not talking about sin and societal corruption. But what, uh, what, what the religion in, in essence teaches is that people are equal in front of in front of God, whether they commit sins and are then punished for that, or whether they are slaves, uh, which is another controversial issue. is a completely different <laughs> thing. But based on belief, they are not different. Christianity preaches the opposite. Christianity preaches uh, that 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 you are equal. The, the point that I wanted to make with the whole grace and forgiveness issue and salvation issue at the beginning is that uh, that that Christianity doesn't teach that you are superior and, they, and that you are saved because you are superior and that other people go to hell because they are inferior. It doesn't teach that. Christianity, it teaches, it the teaches Bible, grace. Christianity tells the slaves, tells slaves to be obedient to their masters with That's fear and trembling in a in, sing in singleness of your heart, singleness, as unto Christ. So you can say, like, I mean, you're telling slaves to make sure they are, they're obedient to their masters. I mean, the fact that it's endorsing slavery, to me, that doesn't mean that it's promoting equality and, and treating people as if they're all the same at all. I mean, if you if you even understand the notion that there's some people are slaves, some, some people are masters, creates a hierarchy already over there. Of course, but that's not what I'm suggesting. I would forever go and say that the concept of slavery, which was not abolished by uh, neither Judaism nor Christianity, is a horrible concept. Or Islam. And that, and that, yeah, and Islam, of course. <laughs> and that, and that, uh, that the condonement of, of the concept of slavery is, is an awful feature of all three religions. I would definitely say that, of course. But that's not what I'm asserting. I'm not saying that, uh, that people uh, are... You know, equal whether whether they sin or whether they uh, cause societal corruption. I'm not saying that. Uh, I'm not including that in the uh, in in what I'm trying to explain as equality between people. What I'm saying is that people are equal based on their belief and their and where they come from, not based on you know the societal corruption and sin or on slavery, which is a completely different concept. So so again, we're talking about the about the concept of hell and salvation. No, no. Concept, so when you say in sin and in be in belief. So you're just saying it doesn't put people in hierarchy in one way, but it does put people in hierarchy in diff other ways. That's not what even I'm then. 
I mean, it's it's. What do you mean not in, not even then? It is. I mean, if you're saying I'm not talking about sin and corruption, I mean, according so, to yes, of course, yeah. And and I mean, according to Christianity, I am corrupted. Okay, so when you're saying like it's everybody's equal as long as you put corruption away, okay, well then I put if I add sin and corruption, I'll, then it will take away the equality part, right? And I become the non-equal part of this equation, right? <laughs> like. <laughs> I mean, the, I'm corrupted. The, I'm corrupted by the devil. The thing is that Christianity does, that doesn't, doesn't teach that because you are a disbeliever and because you are corrupted, that you are therefore a, a lesser person or you are uh, inferior, inferior to Christians. Christianity has this, has this uh, throughout, the, throughout, throughout the scripture and throughout churches everywhere, emphasized the concept of grace. And the concept of grace is not, is not it's, it's very, it's very self-explanatory in, in itself. It's that, uh, that all people are sinners, all people are faulty, all people need God's help and that right. God bestows you grace know, upon people because they are horrible and wants to save them not because they are great you know I I, I, I follow a lot of alt-right uh, content just because I follow things that I disagree with I follow a lot of Islamic content right I mm -hmm. follow a lot of regressive leftist content and I also follow a lot of like white supremacist alt-right content just because most of the content that I follow are people are sources where I very much disagree with, right? Because I don't want to live in a bubble. I want to see who are my opposite, who's my opposition, what are they saying, right? And then one thing I noticed from a lot of these alt right content is that they keep saying that we don't hate the Jews, we don't think they're inferior to us, right? But we we think, but we do believe that Hitler, for example, had a point, and he did he did the Holocaust. There was a reason why he did all those things, but. Um, but he didn't, you know, he was against the Jews at the time for this reason, for that reason, but that doesn't suggest that Jews are inferior. So when I see, like, when the Bible says, like, yeah, non-believers were burned in hell, but they're not inferior, to me, it does seem like a little bit of what they're saying, you know what I mean? Like, it's no, kind of like, I, think it's really I mean, the gas, the gas chambers of Hitler are nothing compared to to what hell is supposed to be, right? Like, no, you're not inferior to us, but you deserve eternal torture, but that doesn't mean that you're inferior. I mean, yeah, you I mean, I think we already talked about, it, but you see what what I'm what the what I get of, from it. Of course, right? but I want to make a make a make a last point about the the whole thing. I mean, you, you give the outright uh, as example, uh, you know that that obviously hates and doesn't stick to a certain certain uh, certain moral concept in in terms of how much they uh, hate hate uh, hate Jews, for example, or how much they see flaws in Jews and explain it as as not hate. But the thing is, uh, you can't find the same thing in the teaching of Christianity. I want to say again that Christianity has the concept of grace. Uh, what is what is emphasized in Christianity is not the concept of that people will go to hell because they are not believers what is emphasized is that everyone uh is originally sinful and is going to hell but that you can be saved and the concept of of, of being saved the concept of grace is being emphasized the concept of grace for uh, is is that people uh, are not deserving of being saved that uh, that Christians who are Christians who will die as Christians and who will go to uh, go to heaven by Christian belief will not go to heaven because uh, because they acquired that because they have been so awesome because they have been so superior they will go because God bestowed upon them grace undeserved Gr grace I mean, that, grace, they, that they didn't that they didn't okay, deserve. So, but I don't. It's it's, it's it's not deserved. It's not acquired. It is undeserved and given by God. Yeah, but so the uh, the deserving part is the hell part. The undeserving part is the heaven part, and that's very ungraceful, in my opinion. But I mean, it talks I about the weeping and gnashing of the teeth when you go in when you're in hell. It tells you that there will be worm eating your eyes forever, and keeps growing back, and it keeps eating it again. This is the Bible. That's not, and he talks about there's talk about grace while talks about these things. Jesus tells that if you lust, in the New Testament teaches you that if you lust over another woman, it's better to. Take out your eye. You know how many times yeah. I've lusted over other women. You know I don't have enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have enough eyes to cover all that. Well, Anyways, that one thing. Very Middle Eastern. Uh, mid Middle Eastern. Way oh yeah. <laughs> one thing I want to respond to when you say these are the products of their time. There's two things with regards to that. First of all, yeah, that's our point. It should just stay for that time. Like our entire point when it, when it comes to the Bible and the Quran is like. 
can we please not bring it into the modern fucking era? Like, people are like, why are you judging the Bible or the Quran? This was a product of its time. Yeah, and we want to keep it there. That's the entire point of our activism. <laughs> right? I, I get that, sure. I get that. Yeah. Right. And another, another thing is that it's actually worse than the product of its time because we, we saw that we could even expect more from the people of that time. Right from people a thousand years before them, before the uh, we we could have expected more. We saw that people even back then were capable of coming up with much better conclusions than. Of the course, Quran and the there, Bible. there were much better conclusions. I, I believe the Zoroastrians had had much better morals in so many ways than. Nah. Uh, well, the, in, in many ways, like like treating Zoro each other. Islam got the idea of killing blasphemers uh, from Zoroastrianism. Probably, yeah. Zoroastrianism is a was a very evolutionary. Uh, yeah. went through huge evolutions throughout its time. But but Zoroastrianism was probably was was for example a religion that taught uh, not to keep slaves, not not to take slaves, and to free slaves. You know, although Islam always takes the credit uh, as being uh, Muslims always give Islam the credit as the first religion that introduced such a thing. It's not true. That's, that comes from Zoroastrianism, for example. So th there are different religions that, uh, that of course, had much better solutions. There are religions, um, there are concepts 600 years before Judaism that already established the law of not murdering each other and of not right. stealing from each other. Of right. course, that, 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 is, that is absolutely true. But... Uh, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is that this is what I what I like about the religion. I'm not saying that this is unique to the religion. Right. By the way, when is just a sidetrack, when when whenever Muslim says like, "Oh, Muhammad uh, freed many slaves," right? Uh, my my response to that is like, it's kind of like saying that, "Hey, don't you have a thousand women to rape, but let's not rape all of them, okay? <laughs> let's." I'm going to be so kind. I'm going to pick, like, let's try to leave some of them alone and not rape them and just rape most of them, but not all. The less you rape them, the, so you're so kind. Like, wow, you have, you, you, you have 500 women that you were going to rape, the, a capture and you were going to rape, and you freed 10 of them. What a kind <laughs> person. And you're only not going to rape 490 of them. Wow. Also, we have very clear reports that Mohammed, um, Traded slaves multiple times. Yes, and e even with such preferences. He didn't even he... free Bilal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he also did this thing. Um, Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr freed freed Bilal. Not Muhammad, uh -huh. like when I. That's the first thing I when I heard that Abu Bakr freed Bilal, I'm like, wait a minute, what? So does that mean that until Muhammad, until his death, never got around to freeing Bilal, the most famous black, uh, slave in Islamic history? Anyways, go on. Let me tell you something else about that. Uh, the whole the whole story of Bilal, the whole concept of Bilal is not even is not even well established within uh, Islamic uh, scripture and sources. There are so many things, when we bring them up, the Muslims will say, oh, well, that is, you know, uh, it's doubted and this and that. But the whole thing of Bilal is much more doubted than so many but, things that are completely... But neither, neither is casting the first stone. You know that was added 150 years later to the Bible, right? You you can argue that, but it's in the in the essential scripture of of Christianity. So you know, right. you know, many Bibles come with the footnote that this is probably added many years later, right? Yeah, I would even argue that that uh, one major disagreement that I have with Christians, I would even argue that uh, the Gospels are completely unreliable in their historicity and uh, by, when they were written and by whom they were written. By the way. Uh, it, uh, that that cast, whoever hasn't seen cast the first stone doesn't make any sense to me because if that's true, then Jesus should have stoned her right there. Like, imagine if the story finished with like everybody leaves and like, oh, we all have sin, and Jesus now does stone. Her. Stop. I've never seen that. Stop. <laughs> so I should start casting the first stone. That's yeah. what it says. Um, but okay, so when it comes to affecting society, right? Um, the interesting thing to me is that if you look at so know them by the, by the fruits of their labor, right? So we cannot judge Christianity by by what Christians do, but we want if we want if we really want to focus on the you're saying like all oh, these these hor horrible things in the Bible, but we we can only judge them by how it impacts society. Well, no, then I'm the only that. thing we could look at what I'm, so what I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm I'm right. saying 
the hell concept is a completely different concept because it is on a mere belief level. It's not a command uh, on people to do a certain thing. It is just something people believe in. So in in that, in something like that, I would judge it by uh, by its logical impact on a, a religious, a hypothetical religious person who believes in that, and the impact is is next to nothing. Right. So when it comes to stuff that the Bible did mention, what we should do, it tells us to. So. Do you, do you look at the Old Testament at, at all or when you're looking at Christianity or you completely dismiss Old Testament? No, I don't dismiss it completely. I dismiss it. Uh, I, uh, you know, the concept of Christianity is that the morals of uh, of the Old Testament and the teachings of the Old Testament uh, are to be respected and applied to the religion, but the laws of the Old Testament are uh, are not applied to the religion. So, so when it says whoever blasphemes should be put to death. That's not a Christian thing, for example. That's that's not, even though Jesus says, I'm not here to throw away all the old laws. That's not what he says. He says that he's here to fulfill the law. Uh, what, what, that he's and, and then he clarifies not, not to get rid of them. Of, he doesn't say not to get rid of it. Well, I mean, that's the, says, obviously that's not his exact wording. Let me see. Yes, what, he says what, not to, I, think, I think the proper wording is not to abolish it, but to yes. fulfill it. Right, exactly. Uh-huh. But... So, uh, the the thing is that that's that's a that's a suggestion very often brought by anti theists athe- atheists who don't like Christianity. But um, no, the I thing mean, is, I have a- enough stuff in the Old New Testament to. to <laughs> but I just wanted to know where you stand in this. No, uh, the concept. The the thing is that what it means by fulfilling is that it is fulfilled by uh, the Messiah coming and uh, fulfilling the prophecy, or which which is you know dying, res- uh, b- being resurrected, and then spreading the the happy, holy, uh, the, the, the good news to the to the rest of the world. And in his actions, you see that he clearly contradicts the law, that he very, well, very he, clearly he goes against the law. He forgot what he said. Like, he, he doesn't have... It, like, he doesn't have a consistent <laughs> message. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe but, the, yeah. but the concept is very clear. He uh, And also, it's, it's, it's very evident in the name. It's called the New Covenant or the New Testament. Yeah, the, but the, those the names name were suggests. picked by Roman emp- uh, emperors. And of, co- of course, priests. but that's, the, the, that, you know, that's the, the belief, you know, that you believe yeah. that, you yes. believe that God you know that Christianity was created by the Romans, right? Like the way that they picked and yeah. choose what makes it in the Bible and what doesn't make it in the Bible. And the, you know. I would say I would say Christianity was conveniently shaped by the Romans. Right. I would definitely say that. I don't. I wouldn't right. say it's, it was uh, created by the Romans, but it was very conveniently shaped and put in its current form by the Romans. I would right. argue for that definitely. Right. It could have been a completely different religion if they picked some other gospels instead of the ones that they decided yeah, to pick. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. I believe. Uh, I believe many of the stories uh, within the New Testament are also uh, so much in favor of, of 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 the Romans. It's it's very suspicious, you know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So so for example, when uh, in Mark it says, "Thou shalt not ba- blaspheme against the Holy Ghost," um, hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Right. So. Mm-hmm. The understanding of Christianity is that Jesus is God, right? And at the same time, he teaches you that you should forgive everybody, and also Jesus is not going to forgive anybody that blasphemes the Holy Ghost, right? So that's like, make up your fucking mind. Like, um, or or are we, or do you have a yeah. different sense? Yeah. Yeah, people who who blaspheme against the Holy Ghost are not are not are not forgiven. Can can you can you read that thing again? Okay. Um. But or, he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. It's it, eternal damnation. Yeah, yes. forgiveness, forgiveness by God, not forgiveness by people necessarily. I mean, the, yeah, the, that's what God, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So Jesus yeah. is like a you know holds a grudge apparently. Yeah. And then like think about the crime. The crime is like with like Jesus, like the crime that is un- considered unforgivable is just like. Yeah, I don't believe in this story. Like, that's what can't be forgive, uh, forgiven. Not rape, not genocide, not murder. All of that can be forgiven. But like, nah, Holy Spirit, no, nah, not my cup of tea. Like, I, th- I think the the thing, even uh, the the concept of that, you know, how the the the, the concept of not blaspheming against the Holy Spirit makes. Uh, I think the point of that is that the Holy Spirit is how God acts, you know, of how of, of God's actions. And if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, then you are like uh, blaspheming against what God apparently, uh, you know, does in the world, what he has decided, what he has ruled to be to happen, to be bound to happen. I, th- I think that's the point. I, I get your point. But yeah, I mean, the, the, another point is that 
it's a very ineffective way of communicating people. If, like the way that the fact that we have so many different versions of Christianity and different belief system. I mean, to me, so just like, so me, so just said like, yeah, this could have been the best you could say about the God of the Bible and the God of the Quran is was a God that meant well, but really had really poor, you know, writing skills. <laughs> right, right. Like honestly, if so, know, if 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 so many people look at the same book and get so many different things, maybe it could have been a little bit more clear about what it's trying to say. No. Yeah. Well, the the, the uh, I want to make something clear right now because uh, you know the the chair that I'm sitting in right now it looks very much like I'm 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 uh, I'm a Christian apologist in front of an of an entire. Oh, hey, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> that, that, that's where it has. That that's where it has come, but uh, I don't I don't believe in Christianity. I I can't see myself believing in Christianity. Um, what was I going to say? Come on, I, I was I was just going somewhere about this. Give me you a look like a Christian apologist, and that's not at all the image that we should. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my point was that uh, when when I look at religions, when I look at Christianity, I think, uh, which is also something that I that I uh, disagree with Christians with, is that uh, is that Jesus, as depicted in the Scripture, or we don't we don't know how he was in reality. We, uh, I think, historically, we mostly agree that he did exist, but we don't know uh, of his anything. of his qualities. We don't know what he actually did. What he you know what he was about whatever you don't know anything but, yeah uh -huh. and um when we look at when we look at, at jesus i think if jesus was exactly as he's depicted uh in the new testament in the gospels in the letters then he was an awesome guy of, of his time and he oh. was he was someone who made uh who made revolutionary amazing things in his time and he acted just uh the way someone in his time would act not he, really he cursed the tree he made some. <laughs> he made some pigs why jump off. the tree. <laughs> he made some pigs jump off a cliff for not committing, uh, doing nothing. And he went. For, there for were people doing people. business in the temple. There were people <laughs> lending money. And he went and just start messing with, like, just like uh, ruining their business. He just started toppling their business. You would go against it from a purely atheistic point of view because he was going against against people who were uh, who were very legalistic. And who, who are ruling and you know corrupting the faith, uh, which is about morality, with being completely <laughs> legalistic and making business off on it. They know? were made, they were they were they were okay. So it, this guy is just against any interest, which is which is ridiculous. Without without banking and interest, <laughs> you wouldn't. Anyway, they my, my, with anyone. <laughs> And, my, my, like, my point and was, instead of like having a going and talking to them and like instead of sitting them like hey can have you considered that this is I don't agree with this method like he just went in there and he just starts toppling their tables like what the hell dude like somebody should call if somebody did that today we would call the cops we would call the cops on that guy <laughs> like there's a crazy man here people are trying to sell <laughs> sell stuff and buy stuff and he's just causing, harassing everybody like what kind of a there's a madman <laughs> my point. My point was. My point is what I, what I was actually going to. Uh, uh, Jesus was a good person. If he Jesus, was, Jesus was a Jesus was a good person who uh, who tried to make change in his in his time. That's a very unchristian thing to say of me, but you know that that, that that's how I that's how I view Jesus. He was a, a good guy who tried to make a big societal change in his time. Uh, he was going against uh, the whole harsh, brutal, legalistic uh, way of how Jews were ruling society, and um, and and he he. Used very very simple myth methodology of his time. He preached with with hell, with salvation. He he told people exactly what they wanted to hear, what they would want to hear uh, a few centuries later. Apparently, because in his time, no one really appreciated that. <laughs> but uh, like a cult leader to me, what, whatever you call him, I would say I would say Jesus was an amazing guy for his time. Who. Mm -hmm. Who talked exactly in the way someone in his time would have to talk in order to convince people of something? He's also he was also racist. Racist. Yeah, because if, think about the Good Samaritan story, right? He tells <laughs> people, he says people like the story of the uh, people think the Good Samaritan story is like a nice story, but if you think about it, he's basically suggesting that even a Samaritan could do a good thing, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So he's like. Imagine if I told the story, like, there was this poor lady, nobody was helping her, and all of a sudden, a black person came and helped her. A black <laughs> person, can you imagine, like, even a black person could be, do something kind, right? I mean, yeah. that's, <laughs> I don't know, but it's, um, and I, wait, I, I, also, another reason why, um, 
problem with his story as a you know I know all of this is not real, but there is this the sacrifice part part of the story because I don't know what he did in the Bible that you think he was a good guy, right? Because he just just was a weirdo, a madman that just said some, just knew how, like was saying some sweet stuff, but everything he did seems kind of random and insane. Uh, but the main reason why Christians consider him a good person was not any of that. Okay, the, he 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 cured some blind people. That was nice. Um, uh, that so that's nice. good. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> he cured some diseases. That was nice. I give him that. But the main reason why, I mean, if I mean honestly, he's God, so he he also made them blind to begin with. Um, so actually, that was not nice. I take that back. Um, but the sacrifice part is. He tells people like, "Hey, don't worry. I'm going to rise in heaven right after I die." Right? Mm -hmm. I don't understand what's a, how is it a sacrifice? Like, it doesn't make any sense. He just had a bad weekend. That's all that happened. That's all. That's <laughs> all there's to it. And also, when he w when he came back, then he went to heaven. He became king. He sat on a throne in heaven. Doesn't seem like that. Seems like an upgrade to me rather than a sacrifice. Yeah, 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 doesn't yeah. make any sense. Well, how Christians usually explain it, I think, is is that uh, is that Jesus has two natures, which is uh, the, his human nature and his divine nature. And when he was on his on his mission uh, among the humans, he was the son of man, and he was uh, in oh, it with his that. human human nature. And his human nature suffered a horrible horrible torture and horrible death, uh, and was sacrificed then to it's horrible as what he did to other people. Yeah, of course, and, but... also, and also it's like if I knew. That I'm God, and after this pain, like if you if somebody came to you and like, hey, can you do you do you mind being crucified? It's just a few hours of really excruciating pain, but after that, it's, you're gonna be in heaven. It's gonna be fantastic in heaven. Everything is cool. Plus, everyone's sins are gonna be forgiven. You're like, I mean, I'll take that bet. Like that seems like a pretty sweet deal. Everyone goes to heaven. I go to heaven. A few hours <laughs> of pain. I mean, I don't think that's a bit sac that's yeah. a sacrifice. Yeah, well, that, that that's one of the things together with the with the uh, with the whole Trinity concept. I think that is uh, is kind of a difficult issue in Christianity that people often often question. I don't know. I just see it as a as a mere thing, you know, like uh, God's plan to signify to people that uh, that this guy the, that this guy is coming and he's uh, being sacrificed and he's the Son of God and and is God, and thereby uh, the sins of humans are forgiven and they will be saved which is, so, which is stupid you know yeah. that's stupid it's like I, I'm gonna torture this guy and all of your sins are forgiven you can argue it's that like, it's unnecessary <laughs> it's weird it's, it's, it's like it's kind of like saying, I'm gonna go masturbate for your sins like it's the same thing <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know how is that how is that even connected uh, with each other yeah. um, but okay but when it comes to affecting society um, you know like we know as again Islam is very political, right? Christianity is not that political, but it is a little bit political, a little bit. And that little bit has been used by kings throughout history, right? Like all the great things about Western society, when we say Western society, um, you know, I don't think and people say like, oh, Christian, it happened in Christian countries. Like, so did fucking Nazism. Nazism also happened in Christian countries. Like we don't give... We don't say Nazism is a Christian value. I don't think mm -hmm. that's fair, right? So just because it happened in Christian countries doesn't mean that the Enlightenment values have anything to do with Christianity. Enlightenment values happen because of the Enlightenment era, which happened by pe which because thanks to people like Voltaire, which were anti-Christian, right? Yeah, but. I, th I think people make a huge mistake in discussing whether the Enlightenment uh, is a Christian thing or an anti-Christian thing. I, I just I just disagree with both sides. I, I don't think it's a uh, it's something that should be uh, that that Christians should be credited for, and I don't think it's something that uh, right. that, that anti-Christian positions should be credited for. I think that uh, that Christianity play, played a big role in the Enlightenment, but that the lack of Christianity or the freeing of Christianity of Christian authority also played a played a very big big role, as in Voltaire, for example, whom I whom I very like. As, uh, <laughs> I don't think as, there's as anything in Christianity is. that is responsible for enlightenment. I believe there is. What? 
Well, um, we have many many enlightenment figures uh, to begin with. It, this is this is not the this is not the main point that I'm that I'm going for. But uh, to begin with, we we have uh, just as we say that Voltaire, for example, was some guy who really uh, hated hated the religiosity and uh, religious doctrine. He was also someone who uh, who had a lot of respect for for several uh, Christian authorities. But uh, apart from that, aside from that, there were so many people in the Enlightenment movement who, in their core, believed that Christianity was was the most perfect thing to live by. Even um, <clears throat> so, some people who are credited with starting the whole movement of the Enlightenment, like Descartes, for example, are people who uh, who valued Christianity very much and who who have very yeah, very but they got phrases. nothing out of Christianity that is they responsible did. for. They did, one, that, tell me one that, value. Oh. That, that's not the main point, but 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 it is. I'll come to that. I'm saying uh, just just as we have uh, anti-Christian figures within the Enlightenment, we have also figures whose main uh, point of argument for the Enlightenment was Christianity. Uh, we, and we have many of them. And but, you know, well, but we also okay. So for example, we have a lot of scientists. Okay. Like, I'm going to use your method. I'm going to compare it to Islam. Okay, we have a lot of scientists in Islamic history, right? And some a lot, some of them were um, Arab scientists that actually have a anti-Islamic quotes, anti-Quran uh -huh. quotes, anti. But we also have some of them that gave credit to Islam for being scientists, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, uh, and they did great science. So, um, many of them. Right, some of them did good philosophy. Some of them did shitty philosophy. Some of them were great poets, great artists. But there's nothing, even if they say that their science was inspired by Islam, there's okay. nothing in Islam that actually can be directly linked to them doing science. There is nothing in Islam that could be linked to the main. So I, I I would even uh, go ahead and be fair and say there is little, but. Uh... <laughs> Uh, what, what I'm what I'm trying to say, the main point is to rephrase that is I am not suggesting that Christianity can be credited for the Enlightenment. I don't think that the, the Enlightenment is a result of Christianity. I would equally also never say that uh, the Golden Age of Islam, which was by no means golden, uh, is is a result of of Islam. I would never. I call it the Golden it, Age of Arabs because it was not thanks to Islam. It was not, thanks not, to not even Arabs. There were so many Persians in it who were like to totally disconnected from Arab culture. Yeah, but, but they were under under arab rule yeah okay to be fair but um i would i would say that i would say that christian that 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 christianity um is in many ways how can i phrase it to not uh, jump back to that again <laughs> but i would say, i would say that christianity in its existence in in how christianity uh shaped morals so far in society uh played a role in leading to the enlightenment and played a role in in shaping the enlightenment even as the outcome even at, at the end of the enlightenment we had christian values that people who appreciated the enlightenment appreciated as well because uh because they thanked christianity for making this possible um let me come to let me come to this i i i brought this up before i think we, we were in this discussion discussion before i i said uh i the enlightenment movement would have never been possible under islam especially not in in the way it was it, it happened in 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 christian europe for example it would never have been the same it would have never been remotely anywhere like that uh i think the enlightenment was possible very much uh, not only due to but also to a certain extent because Christianity was part of society because Christianity gave people the idea to uh, to, to recognize the equality of men before God for example which is something that so many enlightenment thinkers have cited throughout their uh, where throughout does their it, where from the Bible are you getting this from well, you know the Bible. The Bible. I don't have a correct. I don't have a complete uh, direct reference. But uh, it's it's a it's a pretty normal teaching that uh, that that men are created equal before God. Before and God I, is the key part, though. Of of course, before God. But the, but that's something that Enlightenment thinkers, for example, cited cited very often exactly. as a value that we should uphold as a as a value that religious authority in Europe has suppressed, except especially the Catholic Church, uh, and especially. Uh, certain regressive Protestant movements that came out of of the of the whole uh, Reformation movement, right? So, but again, we're talking about let's think about the Enlightenment values. We're talking about free speech, right? Which the Bible is against. 
Bible I wouldn't, is, I wouldn't, I wouldn't the Bible is anti-blasphemy. Okay, uh -huh. we're talking about uh, freedom and abolition of slavery. That's one of the things that came out of the. the when we talk about the va enlightenment values that people celebrate, we're talking. These are the things which we're talking about. Which oh, the Bible have the wrong concept of celebrating wait, that wait, enlightenment values. No, I'm just giving some examples. Right, uh -huh. there's many things that came out of the enlightenment. Right, um, which is again. Freedom, uh, slavery is something that the Bible endorses, and you, ag you agreed with me on that. Yeah. We're talking about. I would say it endorses, but I would say, yeah, it condones. Condones. We're talking about democracy, right? Came out of enlightenment. The, the Bible teaches you that let every soul be uh, be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but, but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Who, whoever therefore resists the power, resists the or ordinance, uh, or ordinance of God and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation so the the whole idea of it's funny because Protestants the whole idea of Protestants is to protest and the Bible is like yeah don't do that um, what else well the, the protest the, is to the is to uh, the, the yeah. point of the protest is to corruption and religion you know right right but I, I'm just, let me then the Bible so the enlightenment values is also talking about equality and again not equal, not equality of outcome, but equality of opportunity, right? Um, and let me see. So when we're talking about the Bible teaching equality, we have again the Bible tells you: for if the woman uh, be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if the but if it be a shame uh, for a woman to be shorn, I wish I had the uh, the other translation. These are. The KGV translations are harder to read. Um, new international version. Yeah, new international yeah. version is better. Um, ne neither was it the man created for. Okay, so let me see. For a man in the, for a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Uh, for my for ah God, these are b b biblical ancient words. As he is the image and glory. Oh, the man is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. So the wom women were created for men, which is anti-equality. We mm -hmm. also I think you also know in the New Testament, we have teachings that women should be silent. Sh women shouldn't have the position of authority. Women shouldn't be teaching. They should be yeah. silent. And obedient does doesn't seem very equal to me. I wouldn't necessarily say that the Enlightenment directly w uh, went against that. I mean, that's something that came very much later after the Enlightenment. Well, but no, it's, the, it's it's a result of the Enlightenment, of course. But it came very okay, much after so, that. I, would I know it's a result of Enlightenment. I mean, the I, I agree. The the good thing about supporting the Enlightenment uh, is that you don't have to. It, people, a lot of religious figures keep pointing out the problems with the Enlightenment, but they don't understand that these people uh, are not our prophets. <laughs> they don't think that they were complete. Complete. We just think it was part of a movement. Like they're not like our the way that they see their prophets. We don't look at the Enlightenment that way. The whole idea is to keep editing it and improving mm -hmm. it. Of course, uh, Voltaire would be socially crucified today for yeah. <laughs> if he was alive today. You know. I mean, the the, the Enlightenment thinkers of um, you, you know United States right now they had slaves, right? Of and course. people keep pointing out to that to us and like, yeah, we never think. We, yeah, we didn't think they were perfect. They just started something great. Um, also, anti, um, uh, you know, anti-gay messages in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem very equal, um, pro-equality. Of course, I have uh, to disagree with that as well. Yeah, but, but the, uh, the the point here is, uh, I would, I, 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 I definitely agree that Christianity has a lot of moral uh, flaws as well. I definitely agree that Christianity has logical flaws and moral flaws, and I would never, uh, as I said at the very beginning of our conversation, never think that Christianity is a perfect way to, way of living. Otherwise, I would be living it. Right, but I what think, is it there that you think that outweighs all of these good messages? Because I'm not seeing it. What do you mean? Uh, you mean like, outweigh these bad? Okay. I outweigh these, these bad messages. Uh -huh. Sorry. Like, where, where are they? Where, where is it? Because so far, okay. Here, let's let's list them. Um, forgiveness, forgive everybody. Everybody. I, I think I think we're thinking too black and white about uh, about my whole uh, my whole perspective on Christianity. You know, I have this. Uh, I would I would see it like if I like Christianity as a religion that that's what that's kind of the whole uh, point why I at yeah, the beginning said I like it as a religion. Not it's kind of like saying I like it I like AIDS as a disease. I don't like AIDS, but <laughs> given 
you're, among all diseases, it's my favorite disease. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't no, see that. No. But, so what do, you, what do you mean as a religion? Well, I, mean, I, I like. I think that I think that religions are uh, are in themselves very flawed. Many many of them, or or most of them. I think that there is very little wrong with uh, with Jainism, for example. There is compared to other religions very little wrong with uh, with with Christianity. I think there is. Um, I think Christianity has a lot of. A lot of positive that it gave society, that it gives people who believe in Christianity, who strictly follow Christianity. Of course, it has also some bad points. But the thing is, uh, Christianity has has the concept of being, uh, you know, of discouraging and uh, being against homosexuality, for example, and describing it as a, as an immoral and bad and horrible act, especially in the letters of Paul. But um, the thing is, of course, Christianity does it, and I, I totally disagree with it. I, th I totally think it's bad. But uh, I wouldn't fight against Christianity because of its message against homosexuals, because uh, I, I wouldn't see very much of a point, a point in it. I would argue with Christians and would say, I would argue with a Christian if a Christian comes to me and would say, hey, there is probably nothing wrong with being a homosexual, because uh, you can try to get rid of that for your entire life, and you won't get rid of that. And I can give you so many examples of But even if you can choose it, I think it still is not a, it's not a of problem. Of course, of course, of course. I would, I would say even that as well. Even if. Yeah, of course, of course. I, I totally agree with that. Even if you could, could choose it, there is nothing no wrong with it. I would totally yeah. say, that, say the same thing. But uh, I wouldn't say that Christianity is therefore horrible. I would say Christianity um, is would. is simply <laughs> is simply. <laughs> It's simply not the perfect way of living, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it is absolutely dangerous to society. It needs to be eradicated. I wouldn't agree with that because I don't see Christianity uh, ordering people in its scripture to get to get rid of and to rid society of homosexuals, for example, which I clearly see Islam doing. Right. And right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Me and you agree. Islam needs to die. Okay. We know that. No, um, I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't making a comparison. I was just saying, yeah. uh, in the case of Islam, for example, I agree that we should get rid of Islam because it strictly orders to get rid of people who uh, commit homosexual actions. Christianity doesn't say that. Christianity doesn't uh, doesn't teach people to, you know, get rid of uh, of people or kill people who commit homosexual acts. It simply teaches that it is immoral, that it is wrong, that you shouldn't be doing it. And right. I think there is a huge difference between See, it. And I, I don't, think. I yeah. wouldn't therefore fight Christianity. Let me tell you why I would even fight Jainism. Okay, um, I would teach. I would fight even a religion that came. Let's say the new religion came and said, like, "Hey, it was a napkin religion, right?" And I'm going to borrow this uh, example from Drew from Genetically Modified Skeptic. Like, let's say uh, the napkin that says, "Don't be a dick," right? And people, somebody came and looked at it and like, "I'm going to. I found this in a bar, and this is my new religion." I'm gonna follow the. I'm gonna follow napkins in the bars from now on. That my religion is random napkins in a bar. And look at how nice this is. It's telling me to be nice to other people. So don't be an asshole, right? I'm like, okay, that's a that's pretty nice, right? But this is a fucked up religion, right? Because if you're if the reason why you're being nice to other people is because you found random napkins in a bar that is telling you that or if it's because of revelation because god sent out a book from heaven or people were inspired by the holy spirit to write something or some dude in a cave you know an angel showed up and told them even if there were good messages there the idea of you being moral because of that it's a very dangerous way of looking at morality and guide to life because tomorrow you might find a different napkin that tells you to go kill your neighbors on, on in, in the bar, right? Mm -hmm. Because the, the, what the Greek what the Greek philosophers did way before Islam and Christianity is that, and it's so such a shame that for a long period in history it got lost, and then the Renaissance people rediscovered it. Thank, again, a little bit thanks to no, a lot thanks to the Arab translators, by the way, right? But mm -hmm. what they did was, even when they got to long, wrong conclusions, at least the process had nothing to do with God said so. I think coming up with a conclusion, even a wrong conclusion, based on logical analysis, is better than coming up with a right conclusion because of revelation. I agree. And faith. I agree.
Right. I agree completely. Okay, so that, that's a beautiful thing that Western civilization is built on on the on 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 thinking and rationality and philosophy. Right. And I would I would I would definitely agree that uh, that having your own mind and thinking things through and coming then to morally awesome, morally great conclusions is definitely by far better than sticking to a certain religion and then coming to the same conclusion. Definitely. Perfect. And and that's why I think that the the so called good parts of these religions are actually more dangerous than the bad parts because they are used to sell the method that they're coming to these conclusions right and again the method is more important than the destination because the method the good examples of a wrong method doesn't show you the inconsistency of the answers that that method gives you faith mm -hmm. and revelation gives you most of the time doesn't give you the right answer just because th sometimes it does and you use it as a way to show that that this might be a reliable method makes those sometimes a dangerous tool and we have to call it out like i don't care if you randomly came up to the right, right answer your method is shit your method is revelation and that method is i think it's very counterproductive though why i would uh i would say even you said sometimes it sometimes comes to those comes to those uh, solutions or to, to, you know to those conclusions. Uh, when we look at when we look at religion and society in general, most people don't get anything wrong and bad from from a religion. I wouldn't believe in religion. I I obviously don't agree with following a religion. I can't uh, believe in God. I don't believe in God. I can't follow all the moral rules with it. But I see that many people in society uh, feel the need to follow it and uh, are probably terrified of not following it and are probably. Uh, and 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 they feel very comfortable following it. I I I certainly can think of uh, many examples of people who uh, I would say would be would feel much more comfortable with religion in their life because without religion they just they are just uh, people I mean, who don't, makes don't, it comfortable. don't probably. That's an argument for heroin as well. That, that's a false equivalence because heroin actually what? kills you. <laughs> so does religion. No, so, does, <laughs> so does religion. <laughs> No, it does not. Yes, it does not. It, In I most mean, people, it doesn't. I look. I, I. I just look at the bigger picture. I mean, I would say I don't need religion. I don't want to follow religion. I don't. I don't. I don't need to follow religion. But I see that many people in their lives appreciate living with religion. I wouldn't even care about Islam if Islam wasn't such a horrible religion that, uh, that spreads so many, so many, bastardized, incredibly disgusting ideas around the world that make 60% uh, of Muslims believe in completely inhuman things. Oh. But but the concept of religion itself, just following God, just uh, believing in God, having good morals for the sake of having good morals or for the sake of, of believing in God, I believe there is nothing for me that I should uh, th that should make me go against that. I believe, as a as a rational person, as someone who looks at statistics today, that uh, religion is in huge decline and that religion will be uh, slowly gone from society. Th thanks to activism, not because of just time. No, religion. I think, it, I think it's because of time. I think it's no. entirely a product of time. No. you would be you would be a religious person a hundred years ago. Of course, but I'm just of course time is a factor. But I'm just saying time is not the only factor. Time and people shitting on religion. There's two elements. There's two uh, factors that is making religion. Like when people change their opinion, it, people don't change their opinions just because it's, time is passing. People talk to each other. People can read course, more no. books. People, can, people I, watch not, YouTube channels. Of course, I'm not saying, like, I'm not saying the sun is moving. That's why we are losing faith. That's not what I'm saying. I know, but I'm just saying that when people say, well, religions will always die, uh, so what should we... Well, yeah, we're helping it die faster. That's why we're being active well, about you it. Can, you yeah. can go ahead and do that. You can go ahead and do that. As, as I, I said before, I'm 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 not against uh, people who are anti theists I'm not against anti theism I just uh, personally prefer not to do that because I don't believe but, it. And I and I'm not saying that you, I'm not saying that you should. In fact, I I prefer you focusing on Islam because you're doing such a great job at it, right? Okay. I'm not such a, just because I think it's good that some people are fighting Christianity. I don't think that means that everybody should be fighting Christianity, uh -huh. right? I think everybody, anybody could fight whatever fight, whatever harm they're fighting, yeah. right? I just identify Christianity as a harm, and I think it's good that some people are fighting it. And just because it's a good thing, that doesn't mean I think everybody should do that. Yeah, yeah, right. But you know, when it, when you talk about other some people 
me enjoying it and some people will find find comfort it does that to me that doesn't mean that it's a good thing but that doesn't mean that i think that i mean nobody's forcing people out of their belief system i mean you're of not course, even doing, you're course. not even doing that with islam right no. it's an invitation it's an invitation and people could just simply say like meh no i'm, I'm good with christianity i'm good with islam right and all we're doing is we're attacking Christianity on our own platforms, on our own websites, on our own YouTube channels, on our own podcasts, Facebook pages, and Twitter account. If somebody, if if somebody is, con- is sees our content, it's because they looked for it. Take they came to us. We didn't go to them. They came to us, right? So people are like, oh, why do you have to? Why are you making? Why are you forcing your views on other people? No, what? How did we do that? Did we hold a gun on their head and tell them to watch our YouTube videos? Of we course, didn't do that. that's that's a stupid assertion. Yeah. Right. So, but but if pe- the thing is that my view is that, and this is a very, not a very extraordinary claim, right? The claim is that if more people believe in reality, if more people's belief system is based on reality, the world is a, would be a better place. I believe we are acting too hastily with that, especially uh, in example today in American society. I think we are being so uh, immature and hasty about about social progress. I really believe we do. I would probably have to uh, to sit down and write down my thoughts about this and, and explain why. But I would give a I would give a little hint on on why I think that's a that's a bad idea to be so hasty and why I think people. Uh, should calm down and think a little bit more about it. No, we have we have data to show this. Look at the Scandinavian countries. People are not jumping out of windows because they're not religious. Okay. No, 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 no. That's that's, <laughs> not, that's not at all what I'm suggesting. What, what I'm suggesting is that uh, is that we have many big parts in society, especially in 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 the, in the United States, in American society. We have many parts of society that are that have that are becoming extremely, uh, extremely, you know. I, I don't. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't find the word for that. But who basically shame and blame people and insult people based on uh, what they believed in, based on what they believe in, based on how traditionalist they are, or based on how religious they are. And okay. th- this has this has become a major. This has become a major movement within society. Who uh, people who uh, who call Christians dumb? Who call? Uh, I I don't go out go out and call Muslims dumb, for example, for believing. Okay, in but Islam. that's just a, that's just being dicks. Okay. Um, that's a that's a prob- That's not a new problem. People are dicks on all sides to every other side for since since we since we had since cavemen were dicks to each other. Like when when was that not a thing, right? Like we're we're talking about exchanging, telling people our views and telling them why we think they're wrong and why they could tell us why they think we're we are wrong. If some people are being rude to each other and being dicks to each other. Um, I mean, I don't endorse that. You don't endorse that. But that's that has nothing to do with the rise of atheism. Or I mean, of Christians have been dicks to other to other people for for throughout history. Of and atheists and atheists have their own fair share of assholes. Like we're not we don't obviously we have our own fair share of assholes. Oh, let's go back to the point. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't believe religion is decline because of is in decline because of just because of activism. I believe religion is is in decline as a as a result of societal progress with time. I believe uh, it's it started it started so long ago. It started even long before the enlightenment it became huge during the enlightenment it's becoming huge right now with the development of of the internet for example where people are are exposed to different ideas of different perspectives of different cultures around the world and start to believe less in what they have been told before you know how many people have left islam because of you Uh, of course i do of course i do i I, I believe that's a I believe I believe that is a that that is a factor of course it is a factor and i believe i didn't say it's the only factor yeah, even it, even the progress okay. that you're and even the pro I didn't say atheist activism. I just said activism. Okay. The other it's, it's progress. Sounded, it sounded to me like you were mostly crediting activism no, no, for that's what. No, no, yeah, no, activism, not atheist activism, right? All sorts of activism. Like even the progress that you're talking about in society, all progress in society is because of activism. Let me be not, very honest. I'm. I'm I believe that I'm doing impact. I believe that I'm changing something. I believe that many people leave Islam because of me. I receive so many messages about that. And I believe I, that's why I'm doing this. I believe that I can make some change in society. Right. And that's why I am I want to do this because I really want to be part of this. I want to, if, if it's necessary, lead this. I want to be on the on the front, on the top front of this. Well, but, you are. But you I don't are believe... on the front of it. You are the number one ex-Muslim channel in the world. 
So you you want to be in, you well mission accomplished. You already are in front of it. But <laughs> I, I would love to to continue that with with greatness. But I st I still don't believe that that I am or that we that pe the people like us are the major reason or the biggest reason why religion is in decline. I believe we are only a factor. Yeah, but we are. A, when we say people like us, there I'm talking about everybody having a small impact. But when I'm talking about activism, I'm talking about millions of people, right? Yeah. When we talk about activism, I'm even talking about people act, you know, people that made an impact in science, in, in you know, in farming, in uh, in other human yeah. rights issues. Like if you I'm count that, sure. Of, I'm I'm talking about all of activism. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. The internet, for example, is just just it's a miracle. <laughs> right. I'm talking from somebody like you with with this big channel, but I'm also talking about just one a person that just one comment against like one person against uh, against anti vaxxers Just one comment. Like even if that was the only saying like this is bullshit. Vaccine saves lives. If just that, if that was the only thing they contributed, that they're also part of this movement right mm -hmm. of course right? Yeah. so all of them together but but let me just tell you my example but another reason why i'm against all religions and why why i'm an anti-theist right okay even, even though some, all ears. even though if some ideas don't directly cause any harm right tell, tell me uh, <laughs> uh, let's Let's think of the people that look at zodiac signs and when they were born to see to see what personality they have, right? Uh, like Virgo, Cancer, or whatever, right? Um, and they they're looking at the you think this belief system, right? The people that believe in zodiac signs, they haven't killed anybody that mm -hmm. I think of because of their views, right? As, as far as we know, as, as, far, as far as I know, there's no there's no wars have yet in ways against different people with different zodiac signs or anything like that. So you think like, okay, that's a ridiculous view, right? But it's not harming anybody. People, yeah. some people enjoy it. Let them enjoy it, right? Yeah. But I, I'm, I, I, you know, a lot of people think I'm an asshole because I'm like, no, that's not true. That's a nonsense, bullshit ideology, and we should fight it. And, and more power to you. Yeah. No, I know. I, <laughs> yes, but it, I mean, obviously, we agree that I, ha I have the right. You have the right. We're not talking about whether we are allowed to do it or not. We're talking about whether it's a good idea, right? And the reason why I think it's a good idea to fight all bullshit and all nonsense at all times is because the the people that believe such nonsense so easily are gullible enough for to believe tomorrow because some random article somewhere on the website and a and you know on a blog or somewhere that vaccines cause autism all right and when you think vaccines cause autism now you believe in something dangerous that could put your children in harm's and other people's children in harm's way right the thing is that if you're gullible enough to for you not for your bullshit radar to not be working, you will be taken advantage of. You will believe in harmful things. If we don't fight harmless nonsense without evidence, right? Belief in harmless nonsense without evidence, we're also allowing belief in harmful nonsense without evidence. The filter that you could introduce to people to believe what to believe in and what not to believe in is the is a logic filter. If you don't have the logic filter, once you pass that filter, where you end up in is most mostly a function of emotions, uh, you know, your society, the people, your friends. You know, it's not based on logic anymore. You have already lost them. That's the only control that you had over them, right? And the the reason why I think that all bullshit should, should be attacked is because that's the only tool we could give people to fight. Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism all together, right? The, 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 the thinking skills, right? The logical thinking skills, the critical thinking skills. <laughs> that's the that's the reason why you go after zodiac signs when you see someone believes in them is because you want to teach them how to detect bullshit. You're giving them bullshit detectors. You don't wait for their bullshit to become harmful. You kill it because it's bullshit, not because it's harmful. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see. I see. Well, I would like to uh, to make my uh, whole thought about social progress and beliefs and disbeliefs a little bit clearer. I mean, I don't know. I I, I think about this so often. Sometimes when I 
just just when I'm driving outside and I look I, I look up to the to the sky and I call me a nerd but I just think about uh, about outer space and uh, planets and progress and all the stuff that we could be doing right now. Well, uh, I, I, but you're my favorite kind of nerd. That's that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. But, that you did it. But um, you know, I I would I would really love to uh, live in a world where so many more people focus on on uh, on caring about the progress that humans could be doing. That we could be going to outer space. That we could give so much more fundings to that. That we could uh, develop all the things because we have so many theories about about what is out there. We have so many theories about the functions of different planets, of different objects, of the of the black holes, of the edges of the universe or the, or the multiverse and so on. We know nothing. We are completely ignorant right now. Right. We have so many theories, even <clears throat> even the most certain things like the Big Bang. Uh, our, our, <clears throat> our last conclusions about the Big Bang consist of theories. And I know the distinction between scientific, scientific theory and the theory. But what I'm saying is our last conclusions on what is, what is uh, eventually uh, the right answer are also simply based on theories we could be doing so much right now right. we could we could go and find out what is really really absolutely true and i would love a humankind that is focusing on that i think we are wasting so much time yes. in uh, in focusing on so many different uh, rules moral rules beliefs this and that and it's not limited to to religious beliefs to me i think the same thing about about uh, about many hardcore liberal movements in america for example to piss off some people but uh, the, the thing is the thing is, I believe that um, I believe that I have my inner world that I that I that I think uh, about these things so often, so much, and uh, I find peace thinking about uh, about our origin, about our future, about where we could be doing, where we could be going, and so on. But I also think about many moral aspects of life. I believe many people. Uh, would love to hold on to what they are believing in. I believe many things that I think about our future, about our purpose, and so on, could be complete bullshit. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go out and talk about my specific uh, thoughts on belief and my specific thoughts on our nature and and our development and the future, and want to influence uh, many people in many kinds of wrong thinking because this is something that i think happens very frequently in today's society that people who claim to know the absolute truth on the opposite uh, side of the spectrum from a religious belief who claim to to know everything and who claim to have absolute certain answers also come out and mislead society in many ways i believe we should right. be careful with social progress we should be slow and careful with social progress we should make yeah. it right we should uh, be very uh, we should consider very carefully we should think very carefully and we should make our steps with care the reason i bring up that religion is currently in decline and uh, that I that I don't want to go out and fight and uh, cause it to die even faster is because I believe it is something that is already happening and it, it is something that is bound to happen in today's time with all the new uh, sources with all the new means that we have and I'm I'm and and I'm I'm glad to uh, in in certain aspects that it is happening I'm also sad that it, uh, at the same time that it is happening uh, I want to but give you an example of certain faulty flawed things that are happening in societal progress that is going way too fast mm. well, uh, certain things that are happening is that we are calling each other names and fighting each other over complete nonsensical things that we could be just sitting down in a calm way and having discussions about certain things uh, that are completely new to us like uh, like the whole transgender issue for example is a thing that we are being so so brutally careless about in society something that we uh, have newly discovered something that we don't know everything about something that we need to study so much further and we are even making laws about that we are making uh, authoritarian laws about that in society we are proposing authoritarian laws about that in society in canada for example about the whole uh, you know how to address each other or how to which pronouns to use or how to refer to trans uh, to, to transgender surgeries how to you know how to how to deal with what transgenderism is or what uh, gender dysphoria is for example we should we should we could be calming down uh, 
and making societal progress in a very reasonable and very normal, very calm way, and only caring about what uh, is reasonable, what is what is really reasonable. Instead, many people are going out and just going all about, oh, religions are all bullshit. We need to go here. We need to go there. We need to change this. We need to, we need to do that. We need to uh, shut everyone out of the government who who proposes uh, any any kind of religious action, who proposes re religion, who believes in religion, this and that. We, we shouldn't be doing these things. We should just be careful about social progress because social progress needs to be made with care. And that's why, personally, I don't uh, believe that I should be on the forefront of fighting religion very, very fiercely. And right. I should be respecting the ones that I like with their impacts on society. Well, I mean... I don't know how well that I, was connected, but whatever. That, no, that was... that made the, uh, Your position was very... I mean, I disagree with your position, but it was very consistent, right? Like, it was in, it made sense what you're saying. Um, even if I disagree with it... Um, but I, just to be clear, I don't think that if I... I mean, you mentioned respecting. I mean, if I disagree with people, that doesn't mean I don't, I'm not respecting them as people. I I'm mean, I don't respect their. I, I don't respect religion. I respect religious people. I don't respect their views, right? I mean, I don't have. I, I don't think it's rude to disrespect people's beliefs. I think respect goes for people, not for beliefs, right? But but um, and and I know you agree with that. Uh, but uh, but let me just quickly go through some of the things you said. Um, before I say these things, I just want to say that what really matters about individuals is their intentions. When it, when you and whether somebody agrees with you or disagrees with you, the fact that you're this concerned about people that you don't even know makes you a you know you're a good person, right? <laughs> like. People don't see that. People, part of this hate that people have with each other, they see some, somebody says something that they don't agree with. Like, oh, you're a fucking idiot. Like, how could you say that? How could you believe in that? But if you step back and see, like, well, this is a guy that is concerned about society. And whether you disagree or agree with their solution, they're on your side in wanting to see more people happy, right? That's mm -hmm. what they want. Like, you have to give them that. Like, this guy might have a different solution than you, but he has the same goal as he or she has the same goal as you. He wants, they are trying to make more people happy. And that's what all of us are trying to do, right? Are trying to, trying to figure out. So when you think about that, then I think your disagreement with other people becomes secondary to the fact that we're all, that's what we are. We are for less misery and for more happiness, right? Well, most most but, people don't see that, though. Right, that, but I think if we could emphasize on that on people, then maybe some people would drop their you know name calling and their hate. But the, the disagreement I have, I think religion should have died yesterday, right? Uh, I think we are more than a thousand years behind. It could have died yesterday. I don't think we we should slow down on that. I think it, the process has been way too slow, right? Um, I don't think. I don't think any other ideology that teaches the things that Islam and Christianity and Judaism teaches would have survived this long in an, in, in, in an era where people are so sensitive about saying things that are wrong. The books that teaches that, endor, you know, condone slavery, teaches you to beat your wife, uh, you know, endorses eternal torture, talks about kafirun or unbelievers in such generalized ways. Uh, such, such ideologies would not have survived this long if they didn't have their religion stamp on them. And that's another thing I ha hate with religion, because once you get the stamp of religion, a lot of the other horrific uh, teachings that wouldn't have died many years ago just keeps to just live, live mm -hmm. you know, brings the past to the present, right? Um, I, you know, um, I do agree with you that religion, these, you, you, you have a concern that we're worried about a lot of things that, we should our focus should be in other places, and I think this is one reason why I fight religion, because, and this is what it, something I posted uh, earlier this year. This is what I t tweeted. I said we have planets to conquer, diseases to eradicate, people to feed. Yes, most cl yet most cling to ancient scriptures for answers written by people. With, pr with a primitive understanding of our universe. The fight against religion is a fight against misery, disease, hunger, and death. It right? is so premature, but, though. Well, I know you think that. I think that 
especially religion, you say that why we have to be focusing on making this world a better place. And I think especially religions which, where they give you an alternative, when they, when they give you an afterlife or where they give you a reincarnation, are giving, are, uh, they're cheating because instead of, because when you lose hope, when you, try, when you give up on this world, then it gives you a way out. Instead of trying harder to fix this world, then you put your hope in the next one. And that's one major source of fucking up this one because you think it's just a doormat to the real place that you're going to end up in, right? I just I don't but, believe in the methodology. But, I don't know. Well, go on, go on. So, no, I I mean I agree, I agree with you that we should talk with each other in a more civil way. I agree with you that there's a lot of name calling, a lot of hostility online that people could talk with each other on a much more friendly and calm way and i think we just showed that today that that's possible i mean mm -hmm. we and me and you had disagree but we're friends i mean i'm i'm Absolutely. honored to be able to call you my friend you're not just my friend you're one of my heroes right so you're beyond Th even thank you you so, are my hero sometimes uh, <laughs> you know you're my hero too ah uh, thank you <laughs> but, but but i also n note that things have been better than ever before I mean, people are calling each other names, right? But people used to, you know, stab each other with swords when they disagreed with each other, yeah, right? Yeah. So, of course, of course. That's definitely true. And I think and I, everybody looks at the time they're in and they think, like, what the fuck is going on? But I could tell you that everybody throughout history thought that, right? And most of them were living at the best of times. Because most yeah. of people, you're right. And I think that all that is the an amazing point that we should be pointing out so often. We are right. living in, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, I, and I'm, I have a lot of hope. I think we're moving in the right di direction. I think the whole point of activism is not to avoid doom and gloom because we're not going to have doom and gloom. Things are going to be fine. We're just, we're, every, every small activist, every tiny activist is just trying to speed it up a little bit. Right, because the difference between um, getting religion, um, getting rid of religion a thousand years from now and a hundred years from now, it's nine hundred years less misery, <laughs> in my opinion. Like the sooner the better. Like I know religion will one day die. I know it will one day die. It doesn't matter if we fight it or not. It will one day die. But every second that it dies sooner is a second worth fighting for, in my opinion. And I know you disagree on that. Yeah, I disagree in that I don't, uh, I don't believe that, uh, that there is much use or I don't believe that it is worth fighting people's uh, religious belief in God. And as said, if, if Islam didn't have such horrible aspects, I wouldn't care about Islam either. It's just, it's just a belief. Many things that we hold for to be true right now about, uh, about our origins and our future and uh, far away from, from Earth, are based on beliefs as well we are so, so many so many things are our assumptions our beliefs and we are we are currently in a time where we are so rapidly transitioning we are in a very very rapid transition between uh believing and holding on to old traditions and coming suddenly to to disbelief and and free thinking more and more because of because of the internet which is a and, and, and the television for example which are two great miracles i just don't believe that um I personally, I completely respect what you're doing. I completely appreciate uh, people criticizing everything. I, I appreciate people crit who criticize uh, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, uh, Bacon, me. I don't know everything, you know, but, I'd, but but don't you I'd, think that we only have that standard for God, like any other untrue thing, any other untrue belief? If people were trying to point out that it's untrue, people wouldn't say that. What's the point of pointing out that this is untrue? Like it, it's just I think like God and religion. No, I, just, I, just, I, just, I just don't. God and that's... religion get special treatment. Like if if some even if so, if there was some an, an untrue thing that was not harmful to anybody, right? Any other if, untrue if there thing. There was the thing is there is not. No, but I'm just yeah. Of course, that's why it's even more urgent to fight God, right? I think God is harmful. God, belief in God is harmful, right? And it's well, worth look, fighting. Look, it. But I'm, I'm saying even if it was bullshit. What? I believe fashion is bullshit. 
You know, I know this is this is a very controversial statement, but I I think fashion is complete utter right. nonsense. Okay. Yeah, I believe people going out uh, making new new clothing that looks a certain way, people uh, right. fancying new clothing that looks a certain way, posting it online, uh, hanging it there, making whole big conventions about that. I think that's just complete bullshit, a complete waste of time. I was right. like, why are you, why are you doing that? What is your what is your damn point? You know, what are you wasting your time? That's honestly what I think about fashion. I've ever thought about it. But I don't think I don't think I should be going out and and fighting fashion because I don't believe there is anything there is anything uh I don't believe I should be doing that. What is the point of it? All right, okay. But I'm not going to I'm whether okay, I'm not going to agree or disagree with what you're saying. I'm just going to say okay, you're not going to do it. But if somebody went and do it you know, told kept on telling people to stop wasting their mind, time and money, don't also you think it's it, amazing to do what you're doing? Awesome. Great. I, I, I don't do it. You know? Yeah, but I'm not okay, but the question is not what we're discussing here is not whether you should do it or not. Okay, okay. All right. We know that we we agree that everybody should just focus on whatever they want, right? Fighting belief in God, if I say it's a good idea, I'm not saying that you should do it. The discussion, the debate that we're having is whether it's a good idea to fight, fight belief in God or not as a whole, whether you do okay. it or not, okay. Okay. right? Yeah. So, and I think I, it's... I have a, positive and negative sentiments about it. Okay. My, my, my view is that I think belief in God is harmful, but even if it wasn't, it should be fought against simply because it's not true. That's all. We fight for the truth. We don't wait to be told that believing in truth in this situation is beneficial no the f more the idea of truth believing in truth by its very definition is beneficial to humanity the more we understand what reality is and what bullshit is the better we are equipped to move forward that's yeah. not an extraordinary claim i don't know I, I I see your point. I get your point, and I appreciate it. I do not appreciate it because I agree with it. I appreciate it because I think it is something that should be existing, that should be that should be happening. You know, that should be around. I mean, as said, uh, we we talked about enlightenment thinkers, and I I like I like Voltaire very much. It, I I would even say Voltaire is like uh, the first person, or often the only person that I think about when I think about the Enlightenment, because I just I just I just love that guy. And although he was he was a horrible piece of shit in so many ways. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all the stuff that he said about all oh, that he said about different religious groups and racial groups it's horrible or but his fellow was... enlightenment thinkers <laughs> he also said so much shit about his fellow yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he was a complete asshole you know, yeah, we, we, would, we would never accept him today as, as, a, as, an, intell as an intellectual person but that's the beauty about that's him. a beautiful thing about <laughs> being non-religious we don't have to worship the people that we are thankful yeah, for yeah, their yeah, contributions yeah, right yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. I believe I believe he's he was amazing in in how he in how he communicated the most controversial things to right. society, you know, and the things that are also controversial today. I I appreciate that. I don't appreciate with everything he says or he or he did. He he described Christians, for example, as I don't know. He said some horrible stuff about Christians and Jews, like several times, you know, right. uh, stuff that we could that we, that we would definitely consider anti-Semitic today, and that we would that we would uh, root out of society. But um, I agree with with his general um, message, and I appreciate his existence just as well as I as I appreciate the existence of of anti-theists, of anti anti of people who are against Christianity, who are people who are against Judaism, whatever. I just don't think it's. Um, it's 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 worth it to be honest <laughs> to get back to it. Right. Uh, well, you, let me just give you one last example before we wrap things up, right? Okay. Let, okay. Let, let's say you are, you, me and you are looking for treasure, okay? And we both have a map, mm -hmm. right? And your ma my map is wrong. Everything is all over the place. The trees are in the wrong place. The mountains are in the wrong place. But your map. Your map is not 100% accurate, but it reflects reality a lot more, a lot closer. It's still, everything is still a little bit off, but it's much closer to reality. We both go looking for treasure. And that treasure, my treasure could be different from your treasure, right? We all have different goals and wants from our life, but we are looking for tre treasure using this map. I'm pretty sure nine times out of 10, you're going to find the treasure before I do. Yeah, and the understanding is our belief is our belief system is this map, and reality is what the actual 
ground is, where, where the trees actually are, where the mountains actually are, where the treasure actually is, right? Our belief system is our map where we try to find out what to, to get what we want out of this life. Mm -hmm. And I think if, our, if we have better maps, progress will be easier. And that's why we obsess over science. We obsess over logic, critical thinking. We obsess over fighting nonsense and bullshit wherever, wherever we find it. Because we want better belief systems. We want belief systems that are based on reality. Nice, but I would I would I would like to comment on that. I would say um, I I don't think it's an accurate comparison. I would say a better comparison between uh, religion and the map and the treasure would be that I have uh, a map that is kind of almost accurately uh, you know structured, and I can go on and find the treasure. And someone next to me has uh, a different map in which uh, in which he doesn't aim to find a treasure, in which uh, he has a completely different system laid out, and he he will find a door instead in which he, through which he will go. Right. And by his system, he just needs to stick by his map, walk certain paths, and when he dies, he will go through that door and will be happy forever. I would say to this guy, hey, I'm going through this one because I think, uh, I think this one is more accurate. I think this one is just better for the end result. But if you want to go with that one and if you feel better about he's it, please, fall down please, gonna, please do so. He's going to get killed. He's going to get killed by uh, wild animals. But the if point... it makes him feel better, please, please no, do but, so. No, but you read my metaphor because my whole point is what your goal is the treasure, <laughs> right? So when, you, when I say different people have different treasures, I was... I was acknowledging that different people want different things out of life. Whatever you want out of life, if if your belief system, like even the people that don't like your way of life, don't want what you want, want something else. What I'm saying is that if they don't know how the world works, if 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 societies work on system that is based on random belief system rather than reality, whatever they want is going to be less achievable. Mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> anyway, All right. that's a good place by the way i took so so much of your time i feel very blessed <laughs> oh, I, I i absolutely loved our, our conversation I, yeah I, I really love it thank you so much for having me no no thank absolutely. you absolutely thank you i'm i'm so honored right and by the way i just to let people know how kind of a person you are like you are like you don't have to do this like we are you're a big name YouTube channel with you know hundred thousand. How many? No, seven. You're you're almost hundred k, right? Uh, no, I'm I'm currently one hundred forty thousand. Wow, hundred. Wait, last time we talked, you were under hundred. How fast are you? Yes, talking? yes. <laughs> what the hell is happening with your I channel? Had, I know something suddenly happened that I had like I had like sixty thousand new subscribers in, uh, in just two months or so. So right, but you're doing such a huge favor to me because people follow you wherever you go. You're a celebrity. Mm -hmm. And you're spending so much time coming here, and you're gonna make people come to my channel and check it out just because you have graces with showing, here, showing up here. But I'm just saying you don't have to do this. Don't, don't you're put coming, me that high. <laughs> you coming? What? Don't put me that high. It's... No, <laughs> well, you are to me that high. But I'm just saying you're so you're so sweet and kind to come here and and do this, and you know you spend so much time talking to me, and you don't have to do this, and you still do it, and 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 I appreciate that. So. You know, yeah, you know what? I want to I want to tell you something. Um, I was before my whole uh, YouTube activism. I was active on on Instagram, and I had this I had this Instagram page that I finally reached ten thousand uh, followers with, and then it was completely banned from Instagram. But at that time, when I was uh, a new ex Muslim, and I was online, I was looking at uh, atheist stuff, ex Muslim stuff, anti Islam stuff. Uh, you were one of those people that I saw that I looked up to. I thought, wow, atheist republic. That's that's a huge thing. You know. And Armin uh -huh. and he's out there. He's making these talks. I would love to talk to that guy. I think I even sent you sent you a message once, and, and I, I don't know if you were, if you ever responded to that, but I, I don't blame you if you didn't. <laughs> but, okay, but, okay. To be fair, if I anybody that is if if anybody uh, that I haven't responded to their message, please come check my inbox and tell me if it's humanly possible. Like I 
promise same, you same that I try, to, I try, I try to respond. But sure. honestly, I need like an army of secretaries to be able to manage my inbox right now. So I'm so sorry if I missed any of your messages. I'm so sorry. Same thing. I always thought, I always thought people should just respond. If I, if I have so many uh, followers and this and that, I will respond to everyone. But now check, come and check my inbox. It's so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, but I it makes you feel bad. Yeah, it makes me feel bad because sometimes then I check some of these. Like I have hundreds of unread messages and some of them are people like r running away because somebody is trying to kill them and they're just trying and mm -hmm. they only need 10 seconds of my attention because they just want me to post something and i might and i'm getting hundreds of messages and i might miss that and i'm, I'm every day i'm so scared that i might miss the message that if i just shared that one message mm -hmm. that person might have gotten saved like it's a nightmare anyway that's a good thought that's <laughs> a good thought Right. Well, it's not. It's a horrible thought. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in essence, you know, personally, right. it's a good thought. <laughs> right. If anybody wants to help either one of us with managing, like coming and checking our inbox and helping us volunteer, please let us know. Because please, I mean, you, you yeah. would take the world off my shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'm going oh, to stop. Make a, I want to make what? a final uh, thing. Right. Um when when I was on your on your live chat uh, last time, I had to I, I suddenly disappeared and I had to go. Uh, my camera didn't work and stuff like that. I want to clarify that kind of to your to your audience, to the people who are also here because I never told about that to anyone. I told uh, about that to you afterward, but I just want to be very honest with it. What actually happened is that I was going through um, through massive anxiety at the time. I was getting uh, constant panic attacks. I was I tried to live chat before by myself and I had a panic attack and I had to uh, cut my live chat short and um, before our before our conversation started with you I started having a little bit of like palpitations panic but I thought we would probably get through it but uh, the more we were in our discussion in our talk I was getting more and more panicky I couldn't handle it and eventually I started just uh, shaking uncontrollably and uh, forgetting my words I couldn't respond to you anymore because I, I was I, I completely forgot what I was saying I started physically freezing uh, and then I the first thing I, I made was completely a reaction that's what happens under anxiety was to just turn off my computer and just sit there and uh, for a second just collect myself and I was like what the hell what just happened, you know, and I felt so bad. And then I told you uh, that, it that I just had a technical issue because I was uh, because I was so anxious. And then later I, I I told you what actually happened, but I never told anyone else. So uh, that's what that's what what was actually going on. I have been ever since becoming better. And yeah, I just uh, was it better? Was it better this time? It was much better. I didn't have any uh, major anxiety issues at all. I, f I feel totally comfortable. I couldn't even look in the camera before. Look, I'm looking into the camera now. Right. So, <laughs> but it's getting much better. I'm I'm re I'm I'm really improving on on that very very much. How do you, how do you how, do you have any advice for people that deal with the similar situations and how you're improving? I am. Uh, well, first off. I, I try to get used to it and just accept the idea that even if I have an, a panic attack, even if I have major anxiety, even if I start shaking and start getting weird thoughts, I won't die. You won't die. And that's, I want to tell that to everyone who experiences anxiety disorder for their for the first time, you won't die because that's really what you are afraid of. You get this feeling of of extreme uh, panic, of fear, of doom. They call it impending doom in, in medical terms even because you have this feeling like something horrible is going to happen. You're going to die. You're going to have a heart attack right now and die. That's what it feels like. And just be sure you are not going to die. It's just anxiety. Nothing is happening. The more you try to, uh, the more you try to just let it go and let it happen, the more you will be comfortable with it. Uh, the more you, you you try to fight against it, the more you will have anxiety. And I, I learned just to handle that. I I went through different medication, and eventually I ended up taking this uh, natural supp supplement from India, which is called ashwagandha, with the, which about which there is so much praise made because it is really an amazing thing it has yeah. helped me immediately reduce my anxiety so much have no palpitations no panic attacks it has immediately immediately helped me gain more control of everything i started taking magnesium multivitamins and so on just things that that, that your body needs that calms you down so i would suggest just letting it go being indifferent and start making like little differences like taking multivitamins and magnesium and ashwagandha and stuff like that yeah. it really helps and I Wait. wish everyone who suffers from the same all the best.
Yeah, I mean, your health is very important, and I and I admire you to, that you're doing everything you're doing, even though you know you have to deal with a lot of stress. And you, I mean, your work probably is not good for what you're doing for your health. You know, yeah, it's, health. It's, yeah. So for so so that means that the people that uh, are grateful for your content. They have to be extra uh, grateful <laughs> because yeah. it's like it's giving you like given the condition that you have to deal with. This is not an ideal job to have, right? But it's, you're doing it's, it anyways. <laughs> it's probably a poor choice, but I. I <laughs> so uh, but I'm, yeah, I'm so, so so about it. So yeah, right. so that's why I'm saying like people have to understand that it's coming at a great sacrifice to yourself. So people should be very grateful that you continue to, um, you know, create content even though yeah. you have to deal with Thank this. You. And, Thank you for and, making me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> no, and uh, also good job at, at at investigating on how to solve these issues and figuring out the solution. Good job. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.